This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by Harry's Razors. Of Harry's Razors. I know, Mason. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to the 298th episode of the Weekly Planet podcast. Incorrect. The only episode that counts. No? What about all the previous episodes? Yeah, I mean, no, they, most of them count. Like, okay. In, in, in hindsight, I guess. I said mm, that. Yeah. I should have prepared an intro, because I always do. That's not true. But <laughs> often I do better than this. Well, <laughs> one would think we'd get better at it after 298 to 300 episodes. Yes. Here we are. Here we are. Uh, for those who uh, maybe th- they don't know, uh, I missed, I've missed two episodes. One for my honeymoon. One I was away at a different thing. Really good question. I don't remember, but Andy and Al. I was in. The, I was in the US. I was at a wedding. Oh yeah. Both of them were wedding related. God damn weddings! You spend so much money, Mason. It's just one day. It's That's just one just day. Ridiculous. You know? yeah. Anyways, congratulations, Mason, to you on reaching three hundred shows. Thank you. We've been doing this podcast for three hundred years. Mm. When did we start? Twenty fourteen. Twenty twelve. No, we didn't. I was, I was, I was lived up north in 2012, so it must have been 2013. I don't know what years are. It's 2013. Okay, right. good, oh. excellent. Anyway, we're here, and we just want to say thank you, everybody, so much who's uh, come along for some of this, all of this, none, none of this. Of it. Maybe <laughs> this is. Maybe you're out. Maybe you're like, I've had. This is it. This is all I wanted to say. Maybe if they don't nail the intro on episode 300, <laughs> I am out. I'm I've had a, I've had a gut for. In which case, you're not listening now. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, don't let the door hit you on the ass. Yeah, the way out. get out of here. Mm. But before you get out of here, uh, we do of course have our charity campaign that's going super well. Maybe it's up to thirty thousand. It is. We I cracked thirty grand. Yes. Basically, the rainforest is on fire. You've probably heard it's been in all the news, and if you live in that particular country where it is, you've probably seen it. Oh yeah. So uh, our fundraiser raiser this year, coincidentally, is all about. Uh, Com- contributing to a seaweed farm, the belt of which is going to stretch from Australia all the way to the US. Oh. And the idea is that seaweed grows half a metre a day. It helps with CO2 emissions. It brings them right down. It's the fastest growing organism on the planet, Mason. What about... You can make a boner joke if you want, Mason. I was going to make a joke about <laughs> trolls on the internet or something. But oh, then very I, yeah. good. I mean, that's digital. It's a different thing, obviously. That's true, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you want to come back to it? Maybe at the end of the show? Um, what about my mother-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That is good stuff, right? Yeah, and it could also be used as as a, as a food source for both humans and animals, which again, instead of using grain, it cuts down on emissions, and so, et cetera, and so forth. If you're looking for something to contribute to the environment and the state of the world, I think this is a good kind of entry point because for me it's quite overwhelming to be like, what do you do in this particular time? And the answer is nothing or this. Exactly. Is there options? Yeah, there's, there's, there's some things you can do or nothing you can do. <laughs> yes. And, and Given the circumstances, I'd recommend doing something. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Trailers Ahoy, Mason, this week. <laughs> Big time every time. We've got a new Joker trailer. Uh, it's mostly the same, but is there anything from it that you went, oh, my goodness, this guy's on the edge more than I thought? No, but I'm, I'm, I'm very much enjoying there's a lot of Joker-based tweets. Yes. I mean, maybe there are every week. I know there's a, I know there's a Twitter account called Joker's Trick, <laughs> which is all just terrible, terrible Joker memes. But, uh, boy, I'm... You're you're enjoying the reactions to the Venice Film Festival? Yeah, or or is it Venice or Khan? It's one of those. I think it's Venice, yeah. Okay, right. So the the tweets have pretty much been universal. I mean, the trailer's pretty much the same. You know, you get it. He's a man, he goes crazy. How thin is he? Pretty thin. It's Taxi Uh, Driver. Taxi Driver, yeah. Yeah. Or the other one, Mm -hmm. King of Comedy, and it's uh, whatever. It harkens back to that era of filmmaking. (laughs) Absolutely, it does, yeah. And apparently... Bobby De Niro. That's right. Apparently, uh, according to people who were there, a lot of people, that it's just just broke the mould of filmmaking and comic book movies, and it's never going to be the same. And we'll never even look at each other as a society... The, the same, same again. Way. Wow. Look, I, love I mean, it. we do live in a society. We do, absolutely do. And look, I'd love it to be great, yep. but I trust these things as far as I can ignore them. Mm. Uh, so You can ignore them quite a lot. <laughs> that's right. You better believe it. So you do trust them? I trust them too much, yeah. Mason. It's mm. one of my great downfalls. I think the more I've learned about this movie, mm. the less I'm inclined to think it will be good. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning that way too. Which maybe I mean, will lower my expectations enough yeah. that I, I'll be like, well, actually, it is great. And I can look at it on, on its own merits. But maybe thinking that will make me go into it thinking yeah, that my expectations right. will be low and I'll enjoy it. And then I'll go and not enjoy it. Also, so many times, and this has happened with multiple DC movies, Batman Superman is a great example. And that was different because it was an in-house screening. But we've heard, like, standing ovation, everybody loved it, it changes the game, this isn't your grandma's fucking movie, whatever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I know, I get it. Yeah, but it would be great if this one is good. And also, off the back of that, then they could do more of these weird 
independently situated movies that aren't all connected to one continuity That's or true. whatever. Hey, side note. Yeah. Uh, Batman v Superman. Yes. A lot of people do really enjoy the, our Batman v Superman episode. If you haven't listened to it, you should go back. And I've listened listen to, to it. it. I think we should release that episode on vinyl. <laughs> Okay. I don't know if I've said that to you in real life before. It is our masterpiece. But I think we should do a limited pressing of the Batman v Superman like episode. Like a mini one? Yeah, maybe Actually, long. it'd be long, wouldn't it? It would be so quite long, yeah. Just the whole episode the whole just episode, or just the review? Maybe just... Depending on... Uh, that's not a bad depends idea. Depends on how many in-jokes there are in it, yeah. I think. Would anyone buy that is the question. They bought that I'd USB buy tape. one copy. Yeah, I know you would. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Well, let's get Claire to look into it. Yeah, that's absolutely. And then hound her every week until she's figured it out. Yep. <laughs> Until she just snaps one day and goes, I emailed and they said it wasn't feasible. And we'll go, yep, that's probably true. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so the reviews are like, like I said, change the game, et cetera, and so forth. I found a parody one, which actually got picked up by the real Joker. Oh, I see, yep, uh-huh. You might have the same one uh, in front of you. I don't, but I, I know what it is. Go for it. This one is from Ben uh, Meckler. It says, crowd went absolutely ballistic for hashtag Joker. Film is... Dark, sick, twisted. I'm with a f- crowd of fellow critics right now running through the streets of Venice, <laughs> just screaming, hollering. My legs are tired. We've been doing this for hours. <laughs> Joaquin <laughs> is an Oscar contender. Follow-up tweet. Joker will change superhero cinema forever. Sure to be controversial. This film is a literal riot. I just flipped a car with two of the guys from IndieWire. A Guardian reviewer <laughs> fell down and we all kept running. I stepped on his hand. Really <laughs> impressed with Todd Phillips. And the last one is a French guy in the crowd shouted, I am Le Joker. And we all started doing it. I grabbed an old Italian lady by the shoulders and screamed it in her face. We both cried and she dropped her groceries. That's good. I think there might be one more tweet in that. <laughs> okay. But I, I it, and it's basically just like, we've had some time to think about it. It's okay. This movie's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. This is my favorite tweet. Okay. It just says, sickest part of the Joker movie is when he go, I hate Batman, and his wife go, who is that? He isn't in this particular movie, which causes the Joker to go insane in his mind, turning him into the Joker. <laughs> it's from DVS Blast on, on Twitter. Anyway, we'll see you in a month. Yeah. Won't we? I, I, yeah. I, again, I don't want to... I, 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 anything can be good. Yeah. But it just seems like... It seems to me like it's a movie that has about a supervillain inexplicably made by some people who have never read any superhero comic books or seen any superhero movies in the last 10 years. Like Batman 89? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. And I see what you're saying. I also think that... Because it's like, oh my God, what if the Joker was the way he was because of society? Yes. Yeah, we, we know, we've done that. Yeah. Like, the, you're thinking of the 1960s Joker who was just a guy. Yeah, right. Who was just wore clown makeup and, ro- and robbed yeah. jewellery stores or Batman whatever. Batman didn't drop him into a vat of acid. Also, there's, like, multiple versions from the comics yeah. that aren't as a direct result of Batman necessarily. Exactly. Like, yeah. this feels a lot like the Alan Moore version, the mm. Killing Joke version, just with a lot of details taken out. Sure. Like, instead of, uh, you know, he's, he has some time as the Red Hood, mm. he, he just spends some time... Spinning a sign in the street. Yeah. And, you know. And then they beat him up. And they beat him up, exactly. And, and sometimes he wears that just regular clown like yeah. plastic mask. Gotcha. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe it'll yeah. be good. Yeah. Well, that's, I think also, if even if it is really good, I think sometimes people take the wrong messages from these things. We'll see, won't oh, we? We sure will. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> anyway, uh, speaking of DC, Andy Machete, who next week, of course, is. Uh, Sorry, what's his name? Machete. Oh, I see. I get it now. Not like, not like Machete. No, not like Machete. Okay, right. Uh, he's directing uh, It Chapter 2, which we'll be talking about next week. Mm. And also we're doing It Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 for Caravan of Garbage. First one's this week, second one's next week. Come along. The one from the 90s, specifically. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I got excited, but you know what? You don't have to check it out. Now that I thought about it, <laughs> it's probably not a good, good movie. It's not. I've seen, we watched We've it. We've watched it. We're, it's not good. <laughs> it's not. Uh, but he's going to be directing the Flash movie. It's been confirmed. Oh, he's it's back. The, it's back on the slate. He's the... 15th director on board for this yep. movie. I no, maybe number three or four, maybe. I don't know. But he said it's going to be like fun and it's going to be humorous, but also elements of horror because that's his area. He's also done some horror stuff, including the It movies. <laughs> Correct. The Hit It movies. I remember that. Which from, I'm really looking from forward earlier to. earlier in the sentence when you said that he directed the It movies. Yes. I did remember that. So when you said horror, I went, yeah. I'll like the It movies. I've heard that the new one isn't as good, but again, early screenings often mean nothing. Uh, but I'm yep. still, I'm really looking forward to it. The It Chapter Same. 2. Yeah. You know. They're just going to beat him up again? Oh, God, I hope they beat him up. So I mean, he's a stunted... Oh, spoiler alert. 
in the book and the miniseries, he turns into a spider, yeah. and that is less satisfying to me than beating up a clown. Oh, for sure, yeah. My favourite part of that because movie... Because it doesn't honk when you yeah. hit him. <laughs> him. Yeah, my, and plead. Yeah. My favourite part of that movie is when they beat up the clown. Oh, my it's God, so it's so in, good. immensely satisfying. But that's the thing, like, uh, it... And maybe it'll be my favourite part of the Joker as well. I, I, I wonder if there's going to be, in the, in the new one, if there's going to be any sort of, like, dramatic reason why they can't just beat him up again. I mean, he's going to turn into a spider. Because that, I mean... But he can just beat up a spider. I mean, without getting into spoilers, but so skip ahead, like on your thing or whatever. They're one down and they're oh, adults. Okay, so right. there's other kind of things going on. Oh, that, okay, yeah. sure. And they so they'd have, well, there'd be fewer of them. Yeah. But they would have greater upper body strength to swing a crowbar. That's a really good point. Isn't and, it though? Yeah. And they'd bring more stuff. They would. Like last time we didn't bring any stuff. This time we brought a gun. <laughs> <laughs> we all brought a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you shot a spider with a gun? Yeah, they don't like it. No. <laughs> they do not. Mm. So anyway, next week, uh, I have a chance to see it tomorrow, but I won't. I'm going to take I'm it? Gonna, no, right. gonna, it's because i got to drive it the other side of town and yeah, it's in peak hour, sure. so I'll just see it during the week. Sometimes. Oh, like, yeah. we are very lucky to get, sometimes they'll they'll say, do you want to come to a media screening of something? Yeah. And sometimes, it's like two weeks in advance, and we watch the movie and we're like, oh my God, I can't wait, two weeks time, we're going to tell everybody yeah. about how good this is on the podcast. And sometimes they're like, do you want to do you want to see this movie on Wednesday? It comes out on Thursday. Yeah. Do you want to drive to the other side of town? No. During peak hour? No, I don't. No, I don't. Yeah. Don't want to do that. And it's often like, do you want to see Men in Black International on Wednesday night, or do you want to see it Thursday morning in an empty cinema near your house? Yep. <laughs> what do you want to do? Guess what I picked. Premiere baby. Premiere baby. <laughs> Stand next to a cardboard cut out of Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretend you're being neuralised. Ah, my eyes. At Blade Runner, we got food. Oh, you weren't at that one. I no. took my brother, the one you don't like. Yeah, no, I which know. Which is insult to injury. But yeah. I got they had like little packs of like meals. It was mm. it was nuts. Anyway, well, they, were, they were replicant meals. Oh, they weren't they no. weren't real meals. Oh, yeah. 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 Anyway, those are just some of the perks of being a moderately successful podcaster based in Australia. That's right, Melbourne specifically. Meals. <laughs> Boxed meals. <laughs> yes. You know, such as you might purchase at a McDonald's. <laughs> Uh, speaking of trailers, trailers are hoy, Mason. Oh, yes. Uh, we've, we've got another trailer for Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. He's back, but he's now, a ghost. Now, last week, we did a very evocative uh, description the thing we didn't of, see. Of, of the trailer we didn't see. And now, yes. But now we've got now we've got the inside track, because we, like everybody else in the world, have now seen this trailer. Oh, can you believe it? I've done a trailer breakdown. Oh, you yes. want to know my thoughts? Yes. I've already done it. Can you give me a little, uh, little, little something? I think it's a, it's a dark vision. The, the lightsaber thing. Yep. The red light. But here's the thing, though, because it's very much a... Like, it's a new design. Yes. So if it's a dark vision, where'd that design come from? You've had a dream and be like, socks that go all the way up to your to your butt, and then you wake up and you're like, I've had a new design. But then you never, oh, then okay, you never right. do anything about it. Wow. So Does so that so, so Ray's going to wake up and be like, <laughs> oh, my God, I should build this lightsaber. Also, socks that go all the way up to my butt. <laughs> I wish I thought of a better thing, but also I'm kind of glad that I didn't because someone would steal it. Someone's already stolen it. Socks all the way up to your butt. Yes. Semi photos, everyone. Actually, you know what? Aren't they just long johns? That's not the same, is it? I'm talking sock material, Mason. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, like so, like sometimes it'll be like a sporty sock that goes all the yeah. way up to your butt. Sometimes it'll be like a woolly business sock. And they might like stretch out at the top so they don't quite stay up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Sometimes the whole thing will go <laughs> down under your shoe. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you, you run to, you run for a bus or something like that and your sock goes under your shoe. But this time, the whole thing. All the way up to your butt. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so there's another, another thing that I didn't mention in the trailer, there's a fleet, and somebody's probably said this by now, but there's a fleet of Star Destroyers that comes in. So they, many. They look like old school Star Destroyers. Apparently someone calculated and there's something like three million people that have to be on all of those. Yeah, right. But it doesn't mean they're all populated. That's but anyway, true. in the earlier Star Wars lore, a bunch of the Empire went out to the outer regions to be like, what's out here? Like weird Sith ghosts or whatever? Oh, yeah. So that might be them returning and being like, found a Snoke and... Ed- edge of the universe is haunted. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't go back. We didn't like it. Yeah, no good. It was a clown, but we beat him up a lot. So oh, my God. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't believe how easy it is to kill a clown if you've got a gigantic turbo laser <laughs> that can destroy a city. You're... Doesn't matter if he's magic. Yeah, that's it right. Doesn't matter. Yeah, he ain't laser proof, is he? <laughs> um... Well, I guess, I mean, you know, the, the, the Force Awakens trailer was pretty much all about, hey, Finn's got this lightsaber, Finn's the... Yes. Finn's this Jedi, oh my God, he's going to be, he's the chosen one, and then it was just a fake out. Yeah, absolutely. Like, J.J. Abrams is all about that fake out. Yeah. So if we're seeing 
ray dark ray. in dark yeah. ray it's probably not dark ray but is that what he d- does he know that is he a yeah. learning computer does he know well, I'm that sure that's he d- what I'm we sure know he ad- at this point. i'm sure he adapts yeah, i mean so we'll talk about learning computers in a minute well, we don't know what to think yeah do you, has he ever done like uh you think has he, ever, has he ever done the Marvel method of like creative CGI editing? So it seems it's a different thing. In like the, could that from the trailer? You mean? Yeah. So could that be like a green I don't lightsaber? Believe. Uh, I don't believe he has. Okay. Are yeah. there scenes in the trailer which didn't end up in the movie? I think there's one where a lightsaber gets handed from Force Awakens, but they change it from Leia to someone else. I see. Uh, there's another moment when Kylo Ren. So there was just a day on set where they're just like, okay, everybody pass the lightsaber in between yeah. each other. <laughs> we'll just film all this coverage. Here we yeah. go. Harrison Ford wouldn't do it. He would not do it. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but so they, they broke wrote, his leg. Then they wrote bong on the side. Am I right? Yeah, James? They wrote right, bong yeah. and then he took it, didn't then he? Then he took it they, big they, time. they wrote doobie on the side and then he took it from the left-hand side or whatever that thing is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, is there anything that stood out from you? To I, I'm not super excited about this, Okay. to, to be honest. Yep. I mean, I'll definitely see it mm-hmm. because... Well, I'd see it regardless yes. of whether I was doing this or not. But yeah, where, where do you stand on this? I'm excited. Yeah, I'm not. You know, I'm not a Star Wars news guy. No, you're not. But boy, you didn't be, even complain this week. I know, boy. What, are you broken? What's yeah, wrong with I'm you? Yeah, a little bit. Boy, I'll be very, <laughs> I'll be very happy when this saga's over. Yeah, <laughs> just don't just know. finish it off and don't leave us. Just th- this one though, or in general, because you know, there's like. 15 other things happening. I guess that's true. Concurrently. Yeah. 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 Just give some of them a nice send off. Give yeah. give Leia and, and presumably Luke will come back for a minute yeah. as a force ghost. I reckon he's going to fight when he comes back. There'll be a force ghost fight. Will he fight another force ghost or will he fight real people? No, he'll punch Hayden Christensen. Nice. <laughs> No, I think there'll be like dark spirits and, yeah, okay, and they'll right. bring back. And I think Obi Wan's going to come back. I think they're going to do all of that. Interesting. Anyway, this might end up in one of those clips that people post on the Reddit where they're like, oh my God, they predicted a thing. But I tell you what, if this doesn't happen, please post this clip and be like, they, they fuck up a yeah, lot. They absolutely. Don't, they, don't know. <laughs> they have no credibility. <laughs> okay, well, if so let's say Obi Wan comes back. Yep. Alec Guinness, Obi Wan? No. I think, okay, if they bring back Alec Guinness, it'll be briefly yep. and then he'll morph into. You and McGregor. <laughs> He'll morph Michael Jackson black or white style. Exactly, Mason. Just a shift of the head. And yeah, that, be... that's pretty much, yeah, I think it'll be like a nod and a wink and yeah, you'll be yeah, like, right. uh-huh. you know, you remember him, but do you remember a different Obi-Wan? Mm. And we'll be like, we do. Yeah. And he'll have his ponytail from Phantom Medicine. Oh, I don't nice. Do that. Nice. <laughs> but wouldn't you love it? I would love it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What an era of filmmaking that was. Incredible. People are really forgiving of those movies, the prequels now. Oh, for sure. They're like yeah. they're a part of so many people's childhoods, and aren't they just that is true. Uh, incredible yeah. CGI and blah blah blah. And they look nice. Some of them look some nice. Of them, some of it looks a bit. <laughs> no, nice. there is some good stuff in there. Uh, we got one more trailer. We're a bit light on news today, Mason. It's I wish right. we had more news for the three hundred episode, two hundred ninety-eight, three hundred one. If you count the one that we lost. Anyway, Terminator Dark Fate. Yes. Uh, look, there's a lot of plot in this in this trailer. I think this looks. Good. Me too. God, I hate saying that though. We could, we've, uh, look, we've been wrong before and we will be wrong again specifically about this movie. Yeah. We're saying right now it looks pretty good. Yeah. And I know there's not a lot of pedigree behind Terminator movies being good, yep. but Tim Miller is directing it. Yep. And I have some faith in him. Yes. Uh, Linda Hamilton is back. She's good in this, in this yeah. trailer as well. She's putting in a good performance. Arnold, well, we knew this is confirmed as a Terminator. I see. Did and I do a breakdown? Hiding? What? You, he's been in hiding? I don't know what he, or he's, he's, he's uh, we've talked about this, I think. He's, he's just laying low. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and cool. I still think John Connor is dead. What's an interesting tidbit about the, uh, the, the human Mackenzie Davis who's been kind of enhanced. Yes. And I was going to do this in the trailer breakdown that I didn't make because I'm like, <sighs> whatever. <laughs> um, when you're enhanced, you kind of, you burn bright and then you die. Like it's oh, one of those I see. Situations, which might be a thing from Dark Angel, maybe. Right. Yeah. Hang on, according to, is it, wait, is this? I read it in a thing. I was going to say, yeah. this isn't your. No. This is an original thought. Mm. Okay, good. So it's kind of like you, you know, you, you, your adrenaline's up and you, yeah, and you're right. whatever, and you, you got metal skin and whatever, but then your heart explodes. Can't have metal skin forever. No, that's true, Mason. Yeah, okay, all right. You of all people know that. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so we also get a glimpse at the future again. Yep. Which is the Terminator separate, and one runs in one direction and one runs the other. Yeah. One's got a bit of a dog run. Yeah, I like that. I like Because like I, I guess in the future you don't need to be a cop. You can be like, I can be a dog. I'm gonna do a dog run. Because he doesn't yeah. need to be a cop in the... No, that's true. Who's he tricking? You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. I like that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But if you choose to be a, a man, you could identify as a man. That's true, exactly. But if you want to be a dog, you can be a dog. You've got to do a dog run, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, you, you can be. Mm-hmm. I like the new Terminator idea. 
Because we recently recorded a caravan of garbage for another Terminator 3. Yeah, and specifically Terminator 3. Yeah, that's right. And there's elements of that design that, to me, don't make sense. But this one, I'm like, yeah, well, you, there's two of you. That's <laughs> yeah. good. You that know? Is, yeah. Yeah, so, and I do, I bet they'll destroy one and the other one will be like, I'm still around. For sure. You forgot. <laughs> Yep. Still with me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there you bloody go. If you want I to do like a shopping montage, you can do two at a time. My goodness, you know? can you imagine? One of them comes out of the one of them comes out of the dressing room like, what do you think? And the other guy's like, I don't no, think so. No. Not with that metal metal endoskeleton. Mm, exactly. Uh, I think they've toned down the comedy that Arnold's going to be doing in this one compared to like the last two that he was in. For sure, yeah. Wait, did he Genesis. Do he was in Genesis. Did he do the one before that? No, that was Salvation. Salvation. No, that he was some. That, that was some other dude with his face, right? No, that's right. And the one. So yeah, no, the last. I two, mean, it was pretty. It was a funny performance, though. That was an odd choice. Look at me. I'm nude. I'm nude in a factory. I'm gonna kill ya. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't like it. Me specifically <laughs> uh-huh. does not like that movie. Ah, uh, yeah. I, and of course, they work in the. I'll be back. Oh, side note. Yes. Uh, speaking of jokes, I love jokes. The Joker trailer. If we can go back to the Joker oh, trailer, God, I wish. We well, could the, do it the, every the, week. the thing. Of, why doesn't anybody like him? I mean, he, he's weird. Yeah, he's weird. That's good enough reason, isn't it? I guess that's true. Mm. But like in the when he do, he does some stand. I don't understand the, like the he does some stand up on Robert De Niro's TV show. Yes. No, I think they there's some stand up from him from like a club. Oh, and they and see it on like, YouTube in the 70s. Yeah, and mm. like a tape gets around as things do. Oh, I see, yeah. and they just mock him publicly. Yeah. But also, I feel like the, that joke, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a stand-up comedian, everybody laughed at me. Mm. Well, no one's laughing now. That's yeah. a funny joke. Yes. So is it, is it, is it, is it his delivery? Like Maybe. What's the, Maybe it's the, the audience reaction. Maybe it is. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe they throw tomatoes like they used to do. Rotten tomatoes? Correct, yes. Very good. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But then he makes him, he goes on stage in the end. He's like, I'll do my comedy, but it'll probably be killing people. Yeah, nice. My comedy is society and killing people. That's exactly right. God, he's good, isn't he? He's oh. had some ideas. Oh, my God. That's what I like about it. Yeah, him. it's good, right? Is there any more news? I think that's all the news. Okay, then. Oh, I, 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 I got something up about Mark Maron has since apologised. No, he's walked back his comments about... Yes. He, he did some mocking of, uh, of, of various... Superhero movie yeah. fans of various superhero yeah. movie franchises, which I wonder if he did partly because you know I like Mark Maron, I like him a lot, yeah, and I think that he generally dislikes superhero movies. Yeah, now he's in one, and I'm wondering how much of this is him just being him, and how much of it is him being like, "Well, I should be a heel for the Joker movie." Yeah, you know, right. I should okay, be like, yeah. "Well, this is like well, really he knows playing it up, doesn't he?" Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Also, I I don't. Again, like it was with Bill Maher, when Bill Maher was like, who cares that Stanley's dead and comic books are for babies yeah, or whatever. Yeah, right, right, right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't... I mean, the difference is, I think Bill Maher's a fucking idiot. Oh, for sure, yeah. I like Mark Maron. But, uh, you know, I don't know enough about Bill Maher, to be honest. From what I know of him, I don't like him. Oh, <laughs> but, I don't like him. I know a lot about him, but I don't like <laughs> okay. him. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, but for... Like, Mark Maron makes fun of everything and well, everyone. Exactly, and yeah. he's been doing that for, like, 30 years. Yeah, he's been burning bridges left and right, <laughs> yeah. Mark Maron. <laughs> yeah. I disagree with him, but mm. I get... And I think and I think the people he's targeting in when he when he talks about this sort of stuff is a certain type oh, of comic book fan yeah. who... Like, if you, if you if you just like Marvel movies because they're fun, like we do, he's yeah. not talking about you. We well, might talking, be. He's talking about... Oh, I'm Mark Maron at Mark Maron. I'm going to get this guy. <laughs> now, he's talking about people who, like you know, see themselves as the main characters and get very angry, yeah. you know, when, when you take a shot at them. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know. No, that's probably not incorrect. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going through news. That Cheetos movie they're talking about. Oh, yeah, but that's it, right. But Eva Longoria's doing it. It's actually an interesting story behind it, but the way it was like... Oh, it was pitched as like the like, weirdest headline of all time. Yeah, it was like... It seemed like an animated chest. It was, of the, it was like, whatever. It was, yeah, it was like Eva Longoria is helming the, the Flaming Hot Cheetos movie. Yeah, it's so it's about the invention of the Flaming Hot Cheeto. I believe so. Yeah, it's okay, got a fascinating right. tale, apparently. Yeah, so that should be interesting. Yeah, is it one of those ones? I wonder if where somebody in the factory invented the Flaming Hot Cheeto and then they didn't get credit for it, and they had to fight for credit for it. I'm not sure it is that, oh. but maybe it is. I think it might be someone just invented it and just took off wildly, like a bird. Pretty good, like a bird mason. Did you know the guy who invented the wire coat hanger? Yeah, I, I, yes. Have I said this even on the podcast? Maybe. It doesn't matter. Go. He, 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 the guy who entered the wire, he worked at a wire factory. Yeah. And he just needed a place to hang his coat. Yeah. So he just extruded a bit of wire and he folded it up into a coat hanger and he put his coat on it. Yeah. And his boss was like, that's incredible. I'm taking that idea. Yeah. He made a billion dollars. And what did the other guy have? A coat on a hanger? Yeah. Like a, like a nice, nice pressed coat? Wasn't wrinkled at all? And he died poor. Oh, yeah, for sure. Also <laughs> that. Yeah. 
When I talk ads, ads in the 300th episode of the Weekly Planet podcast. We're going to want something special, aren't we? That's right. And luckily, we do. We yeah, do. We do. Harry's Razors Mason, in your own words, tell the listeners, our listeners, about your plans for the summer. What's going on? Where you'll be going and doing? What things will you enjoy about Harry's Razors? I'm going to be alone in my bathroom shaving my face I hear with a Harry's Razor. <laughs> The endless summer of doing that. I appreciate that, yeah. See, that was a trick question, obviously. You're like, oh, what are you going to... You're going to be going out? You're going to be having a party? To-? No, because that takes me away from Harry's Razors. That's the answer. I would never leave my home and my Harry's Razors. I mean, te- I might take them with me, but what am I going to do? Shave in a bloody... Like a like a store window or something like that? No. 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 I'm going to stay home. <laughs> Harry's Razors. And this summer also, luckily, you don't have to sacrifice quality... For price, because Harry's deliver high-quality, travel-friendly shave supplies at a great low price, just $2 per blade. Why would you try Harry's? I'll tell you why. Harry's were founded by two regular guys who are tired of getting ripped off. Regular guys don't want to get gimmicks. ripped off. They don't, they, like, they don't like the gimmicks. They don't like the vibrating heads, the heated blades, the handles that look like a prop in some you know sci-fi they, movie. You know what they probably do like? Mm. Middlemen? Yeah, definitely. Oh, actually. Yep. <laughs> Look, those tactics are obviously that I just mentioned. An inferior razor will use those to try and get you Absolutely. in. Absolutely. But they keep prices low by cutting out the middlemen. They don't like the Mason. The only middlemen they like are quality podcasts. Absolutely. I assume. The real yeah. middlemen. That's right. And the reason they were to keep these so low, so low and so good, is because they've got a world class blade factory in Germany that's been making some of the best razor blades in the world for 99 years. Oh my goodness. So it's factory direct prices also. Also, there's a 100% quality guarantee. If you don't love your shave, let them know and they'll give you a full refund. But quite honestly, they're really good. And if you shave and want very reasonably priced razors that will last a long longer time. than you'd think, mm-hmm. this is the way to go. I mean, and not, not 99 years. No, that's. You'd be dead, presumably. <laughs> or uploaded into the cloud. You won't need. Or you have, maybe you have a digital razor. I'm not sure what their plans for that is. I would hate to speak on behalf of the brand. But I would hope, mm. Harry's, you have some plans for the digital afterlife. <laughs> yeah. This summer, they refresh your wallet and your face with a Harry's trial set. It comes with a weighted ergonomic handle for an easy grip, five blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade for a close shave, rich lathering shave gel that will leave you smelling great, and a travel blade cover which is excellent and keeps your razor dry and easy on the go. Listeners of this show can also redeem their trial set at harrys.com slash weeklyplanet. So make sure you go to harrys.com slash weeklyplanet to redeem your offer. It lets them know that you support this show and it helps us out. It helps your, it helps your face out. But more importantly, <laughs> it helps out Harry's Razors, the great sponsor of this show. My only reason for staying alive. That's right. <laughs> on with the show. Yes. Episode 300, we threw it out there. What do people want us to talk about? They said the Star Wars prequels again, like we did for 200, but we went, fuck off. Wait, no. what would we do? <laughs> would we would we talk about them no, again? I that <laughs> no, oh, a, a little uh, shades of the worst idea of all time. We could just, <laughs> every 100th episode, we could just talk about the prequels again. We could rewatch them and see how we feel about them. But it's too late now. Yep. It's too late in the night. We're yes. not going to do that. We don't have time to watch six hours worth of movies. No. Instead, we watch six hours worth of The Matrix movies. The Matrix movies. movies. Now, what I love about The Matrix movies is from the year 1999 to 2003, maybe a bit beyond that, it did wonders for desktop screensavers, don't oh you think? Oh, my God, it absolutely did. <laughs> I th- I'm, sh- I, I'm certain I had that one. Yeah, everybody did. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was I cool. Have, it have, oh, my God, The Matrix affected my life profoundly. In what way? The phone, for one. I had the, I had the phone. I know you Not did. that phone. It was pretty close it to the phone. It was pretty close to that phone, yeah. yeah. The real version of that phone didn't have the springy thing. Yes. But you could buy the springy thing from like a grey market dealer. And you got the springy thing? No, I got the 7110. It's a different phone. It's not important. Did it, but but it didn't spring. Mine did. Yeah. Oh, it did spring. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> so the movie one didn't spring? The movie one does spring, but if you purchased it in a shop, it wouldn't spring. You had to do that manually. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. It is crazy, right? Yeah, but it was a difficult phone to get, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. I got that. It doesn't even need to spring. No, I know. <laughs> like, it doesn't need a pop-out bit at all. No. I mean, maybe the microphone was very poor quality. It's very And possible. it had to be right next to your mouth, otherwise you couldn't. I don't believe that for a second. But then how would it know? Like, maybe you have a mouth. That, look, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I think it's important. Mm. We should only talk about this. We should only talk about the phone from yeah. the Matrix, of which I didn't have, but I had one that was very similar that did have the springy thing. How else did it affect you? Because I, because we knew each other around the time yeah. this came out, and I feel like there was a group of guys that we knew who almost, who almost exclusively dressed like... <laughs> Neo from the oh, Matrix. I had a black trench coat. Don't even worry I about it. I don't feel like you lead into it that hard. No, though. I did it, but I had one. I certainly had one for special yeah. occasions. Yeah, for sure. 
I had there's a scene where Neo goes to visit the Oracle. He yes, has a, he has a suit. Yeah, it's right. Like a very specific type of suit. suit. I had that suit. That exact suit. Pretty Did you get it in the market? Suit. Did it spring out? Yeah, almost <laughs> certainly. Yeah, yeah. Was that the exact suit? It's pretty close. Pretty close. Okay, in- interesting. Yeah, the thing about this movie but it is affected my style. Is I what can I'm understand saying. that. You know what I mean? You, you carried yourself a certain way. Did yeah, you have the right. glasses that only clipped onto your nose? I have some somewhere. Do you in a really? Box. Yeah, I do. They yeah. mustn't be good, right? They're painful and they don't work properly. I assume. Like the springy bit. Yeah. No, they do because they that's, really grip. They, do they? they really grip. Not good. Yeah, I have. I I bought a couple of pairs. I have them in a box somewhere. I have to glue it to my face every morning. <laughs> well, that's probably what I think. That's what Lawrence Fishburne they did. They must have, right? Because those, like, you, you can see it in the close-ups. They do have the springy things, but they are. They're on there. Yeah, they're right on there. I mean, also, I it's guess like getting your nose caught in a bear trap. Yeah. That, also, I was going to say, but in the Matrix, they could be designed to not fall off, but that's true. But in real life, they can't do that. <laughs> It's correct. They would have had to have glued them on. Oh, my God. I hope people are enjoying this episode 300 very in-depth discussion of The Matrix, <laughs> specifically the weird accessories that you could purchase back in the day. Watching this movie again, I hadn't seen it in a few years. It's so good. It really is. It's such a good movie. I mean, not everything holds up about it, no. I feel. But, I mean, you know, there's some special effects. It's 20 years old. Oh, it is 20 years old. Yeah. No, that was the end of my sentence. There are okay. some special effects. Yeah. No, some of the CGI... Some of the some CGI, of the Sentinel stuff some of the CGI hasn't held up. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of the green screen is a bit iffy. But, yeah. I mean, again, a product of its time. And, yeah. man, it's, it's, it, it hits the ground running and it never lets up for two, yes. hour, two and a bit hours. I know there is, like, movies that this borrowed from, from these comics that are borrowed oh, ideas sure, from yeah. specifically, which uh-huh. we'll probably talk about. But I feel like cinema, in terms of action movies... There's very much a pre and post Matrix kind oh, of divide when yeah. this movie came out, and this movie feels modern because a lot of the things that it did, people are still doing. Not I'm not just talking about like bullet time and water and green tints yeah, uh-huh. in movies, <laughs> but there's uh, like the way people choreograph and, and and you know things like like getting actors to do things like this and yeah, carry, I mean getting exactly over, and yeah. not you know getting actors to actually perform you know really long you know martial arts sequences of moves and things like that as yeah. opposed to swing a punch change the camera angle swing another punch yes. do it in you know 10 takes and then sort of stitch them all together yes. to just get an action so you know the the scene where uh, Lawrence Fishburne fights Keanu Reeves like the practice run mm. you know the, in, in times past that would have been 500 edits and yeah. in this it's just like okay Fight each other for 10 full seconds There's and then we'll, we'll, that, we'll just play it. Because he had his spine fuse before this. This is like a famous st- story. Like he had two of his vertebrae fused. So Who are we talking about? Keanu Reeves oh. in real life. So he had his... On a bet or? Yeah, on a bet. Right, okay. <laughs> was, the, this like, was this like a t- like this is what celebrities do instead of getting tattoos? That's right, yeah. Get, get, Some people get ribs removed. <laughs> Some people get their spines fused. Oh, but, just so he can never do it. Yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> so if you watch the behind the scenes footage, he's yeah. training in a neck brace. And that's also why... He kicks way less than everyone else. Oh, he's right. mostly straight back, straight neck yeah, yeah. punching, and you, you know, it's because he's got a very specific fighting style that they built around the limitations of the what Keanu Reeves could physically do at I the time. I never would have thought of that. I know, right? And there, but there's a moment where he does that thing where he's on his back and then he does the two leg, two leg kind of swivel, and then he's onto his feet, and then they're fighting and kicking each other. And because it's the back of his head, I'm like, that's clearly not Keanu Reeves. But the, the shot holds and it pans around and it is him. And Ooh. I'm like, this is incredible. Like, this oh, yeah. is better than I remember it being. Mm. Yeah. Did you know going into this the twist? Because I did. No, I didn't. No, yeah, right. I went in... I went in... Spoilers, by the way. For the Matrix <laughs> movies, yes. Yeah. They're available free somewhere if you... They're on Netflix Australia at least. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I went in... I think there was like a 9.30am session. Yeah, right. I remember prior to this, I saw a trailer. Wait, were you at school? We had the day off for some reason. Okay. I just didn't go in. For I don't the know. Matrix. For the Matrix, yeah. You, were you a school wagon dude? Generally not. I, that's all I did. I think maybe we just had the day off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, there was like a 9.30 a.m. session. I remember the, the trailer came out like many months prior and people laughed in the cinema. Yeah, but like I think maybe... people like Keanu Reeves. Yeah, Keanu Reeves was done at this point, I think. And, you know, people... I think a lot of the effects weren't done in the trailer or whatever, yeah. and it was just Keanu Reeves looking grim at the camera and shooting two guns. Yeah. And people were like, this is embarrassing. It's like, what is the Matrix? Yeah, and people exactly. were like, no one cares. Exactly. But I think there was a big marketing campaign and there was a big... The, the website was very oh, yeah, right. crazy interactive and it had a lot of like preview stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what's going like on. the Space Jam website? Yeah, like the Space Jam website. So you were like... So this is probably something that now people would figure out. Well before. Oh, for sure, yeah. So I didn't. So I was. Yeah. Saw, I saw like a nine thirty a.m. and then I think I saw it a second time, like later in the day. Yeah, right. So, who'd you go with? 
can't remember. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> Yeah, because I knew, because I remember someone at school, I'm like, what's this about? Uh-huh. And then the person was like, there's a twist. And I'm like, I don't care. Huh. Just tell me. And, but then even then, and then going to see it, it didn't matter. Oh, yeah. It doesn't make a difference, the enjoyment of the film, I feel. I mean, obviously, there's the the mind-blown element of it, which you would have. Were you were like, what? I was like, what? Were you, were you more impressed by this than Bruce Willis t- was uh, unbreakable the whole time? Couldn't stop him. Oh, I get it. I see where you're going with Thank that. you. Ah. Uh, no, I think I figured it out in the sixth sense what was okay. going on there. Sure, you did. But there's know. even like. Who'd you go with? I'll never tell. <laughs> but I think even if you know, like, if you know the twist to the sixth sense, yeah, that's it. But if you, okay, but sure. if you know the twist to the matrix, I don't know about that. It's but just the, but uh, but the 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 mind bending visuals, like yes. you know when you see the, the the fields of human, you know the. the Humans being grown, yeah. and you see, you know, the big harvester machines come down and pluck out humans from the thing. That looks incredible. Yeah, absolutely. That was incredible on the big screen. That whole sequence, which is just a massive exposition dump. Yeah. And I think the following films try that, but it's way less interesting and mostly about philosophy. And oh what yeah, it absolutely. Means to yeah. Have choice uh-huh. and love and look. We'll get to that. Getting people to kiss each other. But <laughs> I think yeah, and I think I, and and I think that is a function of. You know, you have your whole life to write the first one, mm. and then the second one, they were like, "We've got to write these back to back, film them back to back." We don't have a comic to steal from. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think that whole exposition, like, it's like ten minutes of like, "This is what the Matrix is, and this is how it works, and this is how the war went, and this is where they grow the humans, and we yeah. live in an artificial reality, and whatever." And it's just like, in a lesser movie, it's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> right. It's just, uh-huh. and I guess it's. You know, people say, you know, show, don't tell. And it is, it does show more, I guess, which makes it interesting. It's not just like there's fields of humans. Yeah. But, and imagine that. It's like there's fields of humans and here it is and it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. And it's surreal and we're sitting in these beautiful yeah. kind of leatherback chairs and, exactly, and, and yeah. watching it on a little, you know, TV from the 1950s or whatever. I love the idea also that like there's the residual self or whatever. So there's the version of you in the real world, which has got mm-hmm. the plugs and this, you got no hair and whatever and or eyebrows. But then well, you should have, if you've, if you've got plugs, you'll have hair. Please. <laughs> sure. Well, Cypher didn't do them, did he? No. But, uh, and in the, the matrix, like you retain, like however you thought you looked, I guess yeah, you perceived uh-huh. yourself to look, mm. which is interesting. But you know what? I think a lot of this, it's ret. It feels new or, or timeless. I think because a lot of it is retro. A lot of like, I mean, there are like mobile phones and things yeah. like that, well, it's but got it's a, this fake nineteen ninety nine. Well, it's got yeah, yeah. it's got this def- it's got this definite aesthetic that is like what what is great about and I think why it, you're right it why it holds up. I was thinking mm. that as I, I rewatched it last night is that every single aspect of the design has been thought about very hard. It hasn't yeah. been just like okay, well. Let's just have them all wear black jumpsuits. Who cares or whatever? Yeah. It's like okay, this character snake we, skin, snake skin, exactly. Suits. Yeah, or it's like okay, well. What kind of car would they drive in? And you know what? Uh, you know the 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 bug that infects Neo early yeah. on in the movie. How are we going to design that? And you know we go to their hideout, and it's this the Resistance hideout, and it's kind of this freakish haunted house kind of situation. Yeah, you know right. I mean? Okay, yeah. yeah, with leatherback chairs. With leatherback chairs, exactly. Yeah. Delightful. Do you believe, and I think we've talked about this before. That we live in a simulation. Yes, that we live in a simulation. Well, statistically, yes. I was telling that to Claire the other day, and she's like, do you really think we live in a simulation? And I'm like, no, but statistically, it's it's quite likely. Is it? <laughs> well, because... Oh, I'm not, oh God. So I sound like a <laughs> lunatic when I, when I start. Well, that's what we want. <laughs> so basically, okay, if certain civilizations have advanced to a point, this is the theory, I'm, we're going to butcher it, where they can create... Artificial realities, AIs yes. or whatever, mm-hmm. like yeah. the, like The Sims, but like like if they, those VR things that you stood in back in the nineties and you had the yes. big helmet on, you were being chased by a pterodactyl. <laughs> yeah, dactyl absolutely. nightmare. Yes. yes, but I'm talking independently of living beings. You can create an artificial reality. Oh yes, right? it can either be a replica of the past or a society or whatever kind of society you built. If you got to that a society, point, we would live in. Society example. you would live in. If if you got to that point, then you would probably run thousands if not millions of different simulations to kind of gather data and, and know how things work and you know you can test all sorts of things so statistically it'd be more likely that this what we live in now is part of that oh, than I being see. an original because real, there's one original reality and there would be potentially yeah, but even of but even if there's ones. billions of original realities there'd be billions upon billions of fake ones oh my god stemming from each one is what i'm saying but at the end of the day also i don't care like if that's I mean, it doesn't, make any difference, it doesn't does it? matter. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't You're matter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's the theory. That's right.
Anyway, don't fucking come at me with any of this shit. I don't want to discuss it. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> but, I just but there's a parallel universe version of you that does want to discuss <laughs> That's it. That's true, yeah. Speak to him. <laughs> but, Crack uh, a hole in reality and talk to the <laughs> other guy. <laughs> so do you believe also, and I think I talked about this recently, can you be told what the Matrix is? Oh, absolutely. Because I, I, I mean, I was. <laughs> I mean, we, you were told, and we all saw it at the. Because that's the big. That's the big conceit of this is they have to unlock Neo from the Matrix in order to show him what the Matrix is. But I think if you went, hey Neo, we actually live in a simulation, yeah, and uh, and and you're actually just in a in a pod being used for electricity. I could I think see you'd how be you, like I yeah. get it. I could see how you wouldn't believe it for sure. Yeah, like, if he was like, I could tell you, but you wouldn't believe it. I'd be like, yeah, I guess you. Because if someone came at me with that, mm -hmm. even if they had a mirror that ran down my throat, mm -hmm. I'd still be like, I'm probably just tripping, like, yeah. hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did take that mysterious pill the mysterious man <laughs> That's gave right, me. exactly. I mean, he said one was normal and one was crazy, but I think <laughs> they were probably both crazy pills. It doesn't matter. You know that game, Enter the Matrix? The yes, of course, course I do. do. There's a moment where you can choose to take the pill, and if you take whatever the other pill is, the blue pill. you just wake up in your bed. And the game's over. I was gonna. So you, the player, wakes yeah, up you in your own choose, bed. Yeah. No, like you yeah, personally, yeah, right. you woke up in your own bed. And you're like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> What's the deal with that mirror? I was wondering that myself. I'm really not sure. Yeah. Because that that mirror seems to signify death. Like if sure. if it were to if if they weren't if they didn't find him before Is that it part mirror of the went tracer. All, I don't know. Yeah. But if if the mirror went all the way down his throat before they found him, he was going to die. I think. Okay. But I don't know. Yeah. That's a mystery. I'm sure there's a reason. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a reason for everything. So there's a whole Wikipedia. Well, I mean, it's an Alice in Wonderland look, looking glass well, exactly, kind of situation. Yeah. Right? Okay, it's a metaphor. I always love that noise of the mirror going down the throat. Then it goes. <laughs> then it goes digital. I always thought that was really good. You know what else in this movie? The body horror I'd kind of forgotten. There's quite a lot of it in this. Like when he wakes up in the real world for the first time. Yeah, there's in that. that and he just plugs and... Well, we've, I think we've talked about on the bug in the stomach and whatever. Yeah. But we've talked about this before in, in real life prior to this moment. Or did we talk about it in real life? Oh, my God. Yeah, Might right. have been the alternate version of me that loves talking about <laughs> <laughs> different artificial realities. But that, that loosey-goosey crane they just grab him with among fields of... Billions. Yeah. Uh -huh. What are the odds that they would have actually been able to grab him? <laughs> <laughs> you think it'd be like one of those parlor games? Yeah. Like, like absolutely. In the, like at the the arcade where you're like, oh, it keeps slipping out. I don't you'd know. Have, He's so slimy. You'd have to know the rough vicinity of him. Yeah. You'd have to bank on the fact that he didn't just drown immediately. Well, yeah. I mean, part of that is. Uh, the idea of him waking up is that he's never used any of his muscles or eyes exactly, before. Exactly, yeah. Like, you'd assume he'd just slide down to the tank and be like, well, I don't know how any of this works. I'm dead now. <laughs> Do you think it would have been more interesting maybe, I mean, it wouldn't have worked for the story, but if, and we talked about this a bit last week, where if you the version of you within the Matrix, the way you think you look is not what you actually look like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit like the, less like the movie um, Surrogates with Bruce Willis, where you have a surrogate, mm -hmm. where you mm -hmm. look mostly like your surrogate. Yeah, right. And more like the movie Surrogates, where some people yeah. can use a surrogate that looks different from them entirely. That's true. Maybe if you're rich. Yeah. If you're richy rich. So well, how do you think that works where you know exactly what you look like? Doesn't matter, obviously. No, I think I think that, I mean, that, I, I, and again, I think we talked about it the other week. I think that that, that is, that's kind of con a conceit we have to roll with yeah. now. But I think maybe in original versions of the script, there were going to be sort of more sort of trans elements where it's like, yes. okay, the, the, way, the way you look in real life, your your residual self-image is how you believe yourself to be, mm. in, you know, that's that's the contents of your mind. That's how you look, or even what the Matrix tells you you look. Yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. And so the 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 version you look like in the destroyed real mm. world might look completely different. And I think just for the the idea of, you know, I'm I'm sure the first or second pass of the script, it was just like, okay, well, it, this is this is already kind of confusing. So if we can just make everybody in the pods look like yeah. how they look in the Matrix, that would be fine. But I think maybe in the new version, in this in the Matrix Four that we're gonna get, there will be. Some Elements of that. Of that. Yeah, yeah, for I sure. Can, I can also see how if you go into the Matrix and you want to do a certain thing or look a certain way, you could you could do that. Like, well, I'm going to pretend, pretend to be that fucking French guy or whatever. And <laughs> right. you could do that. Yeah. Do but then I mean? wouldn't everybody want to be the French guy? No, no one would do it. There'd be no French guys. Ho, 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 ho. indeed, uh -huh. Mason. Question. Yes. Blocking the sun is a, is a stupid idea, yeah? 
Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Because like what we're going to do to stop the machines, we're going to block the sun because that's their source of energy. Mm-hmm. So is yours. That's your energy. Oh my that God, if you only alive. you were there. <laughs> I know. Oh, maybe you were there, but you didn't want to discuss it. You're like, I don't want to discuss uh, uh, humanity's need for solar energy. If I'm honest, just do whatever you want to do. I don't care. Yeah. And then later you're like, oh, God damn it. I mean, maybe they'd already moved to the center of the earth at that point. And they're like, we're out of options. Let's block the sun. Mm. It's going to be rad. And it's not. It's not rad at all. <laughs> no. Where's the oxygen coming from? Mm. It's not important, is it? No. It's not really about any of that. I think more of that is because ex- in the in the first movie they say that we, they don't know who strikes first in, yes. the, in the in the war, but in the animatrix, and I think in there's a there was a cart there's a comic book version I think on the Matrix website, yeah, and in the art of the Matrix where it's like the the. Wasn't there a robot uprising and then the humans struck first? Yeah, there's a robot uprising and then there's a bit of a, uh, you know, fighting in the streets and then all the artificial, all the robots from the artificial intelligence decide to go live in their own city called Zero One. Right. And then humanity's like, let's bomb it. It'd okay. Be, it'd be so funny if we bombed it. Oh, I'll yeah. never see that coming. Not a good idea. And then there's yeah, right. a war. So but, it, but it is the humans who do the sun thing. Yes. I can yeah. also see... The humans it. do both things. Yeah, I can also see how, like... I mean, we've got world leaders talking about nuke and tornadoes. Mm-hmm. So I guess it would just take one person to go... I'm just gonna do this, and I've got the buttons. So, exactly, yeah. yeah. And so, so ultimately, if I remember correctly, the every dad would be like, "Why did they block the sun?" <laughs> right? <laughs> I kind of like the sun, <laughs> but I, th- I think in the original version, because they're all the, they create the artificial intelligence, and then they just use the robots as kind of like slave labor, yeah. or like servants. It's an iRobot situation. Yeah, it's an iRobot situation, and I think one of the robots defends itself and kills somebody. Okay. I think it's it's, it's an iRobot situation. Yeah. So that is that is the Animatrix, yeah? That's the Animatrix. I didn't watch yeah. that again for this, but I plan on at some point soon. Oh, good for you. Uh, thanks. I also didn't watch it. <laughs> well, good for you. Thank you. Uh, here's a question, though. Yes. And I think I know the answer, but why even have a Matrix? Why not just get them asleep? I'm assuming it's because they live longer and you get more energy out of them if their brains are active. Yeah, or I think, and and you know, but Morpheus does say the body cannot live without the mind. I that's think maybe not that's true it. though. No, I know <laughs> he's lying. Yeah, and also just I mean, like he glues his sunglasses to his face. Everything he does is a fuss. <laughs> he does it in the morning. He just puts on some spirit gum. He puts on a, you know, and every day he considers putting on a fake mustache, and then he's yeah, like, no, right. no, he won't buy that. I mean, look, the 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 whole physics of it never really holds up. I mean, the the. The amount of energy it would take to kind of keep all these human beings, you know, have enough nutrients to live. Yeah. That's more, that would take more energy than it would produce. Yeah, right. So, I mean, the, the, the physics of it never really stacked up, but we're not, we're not supposed to go with that. The, I mean, the, the, it was also a lot of people at the time were like, okay, well, maybe they're using, maybe the machines are using the shared brains of humanity for another reason. Yeah, right, okay. We never got an answer to that. Data mining. Maybe data mining. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Market research. That's very possible. Uh, It's a shame about Tank that he doesn't return for the sequel. He's good in this. He's good in the first one. I mean, I know there's behind the scenes that, like, he came on set and apparently maybe there's rumours that it was threatening him, but it was also there might be a contract negotiations that he was guaranteed more and he was going to do it. And then they were just like, Dozer died and so did his brother. Mm. They don't even name him yeah, right. in the uh-huh. sequel. But yeah. I would I, he's great in this. And he I think too hard. He did. <laughs> but I think if they could smooth it over and if he's, you know, if he is a nice man. Yeah, bring him back. Bring him back. I mean, I know they said he was dead, but it doesn't matter. Because I think I didn't like Link or any character in the sequels as well, much as I liked well, him. Well, look, well, I think we'll talk about that in a second, but I... The, I feel the reason we don't like any of the characters in the second movie is because you never... Because the, the the origins of all those characters are in the Animatrix, or most of them are anyway, like the yeah. kid and... and doesn't matter to me. Though. Yeah, right. I think also they've got a kid who's like, how old are you? And he's like, 18. I'm like, I would have believed if you were 16. I'm like, that good, that dude's like 26, <laughs> obviously. But get the spoon kid, because they're like, we'll get to it. No, I'll do it now. When they're like, Neo, wait, I've got something for you. Mm-hmm. This weird metal spoon. And he's like, I remember this. And mm. great. That's a reference in the last movie, he said. <laughs> I was in it. Uh. You weren't in it. Mm. You shouldn't be in this movie, he says to that guy. That's right. But yeah, hey, here's a question. And I'm I ready. think I know the answer. Oh, here we go. Can you use any of your Matrix skills outside the Matrix? So say if you get knowledge of how to fly a helicopter mm-hmm. or a kung fu. Maybe you might not be able to physically do the kung fu, uh-huh. but do you know it? I don't think you do. Oh. What if you get like the phone book in your head? Can you use that? Oh, that's a really good question. Yeah. Maybe you can't. Maybe you can only access it within the Matrix. But, that they but anyway, it. who are you calling in the real world? You know what I mean? Your mum. Oh, 
Oh yeah, say so, say so how to yeah. Yeah, but I guess do you even have a mum? Because you're in a pod. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I see. You'd call your virtual mum. Yeah. Okay. I thought mom, you meant you my mum specifically. I called your mum, yeah, Mason. <laughs> that's what I thought. Frank calls. Mostly. I thought that's where it was going. Yeah. <laughs> no, um. Hey, hey, <laughs> Mrs. Mason, is your refrigerator running? Well, no. I mean, we're in a <laughs> horrifying. Reality, we're in a simulated yeah. reality. My my fridge is never really running at all. You know, and in the real world, my fridge was destroyed by a catastrophic nuclear war. So, <laughs> good. Well, you better catch it then. Ha ha ha! Click. <laughs> Uh, how about this then? Oh, here we go. How does, do you, does Cypher really think? I mean, I guess he does. I guess he doesn't really think that's his problem. Yeah, but they're not going to put him back in the Matrix. No, they bloody... <laughs> they're just no. going to put him in the bin. Yeah. They're just going to drop him straight oh into, my the, God, into that yes. river. And there won't be a little claw to, co- to catch him. No. Yeah. But if, even if the people were around, they wouldn't catch him. Mm. I just don't imagine that the, the squids are going to come and be like, okay, come with us. And then they're going to take him to a pod. And I guess wipe your memory because you can, I guess. Well, they say they can. Yeah. uh And then he's going to be an actor. Yeah. Yeah. In The Sopranos and such. For sure, yeah. And US Marshals. Yeah. (laughs) The movie US Marshals. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think, I mean, I think he's just desperate. I don't think it matters to him. He wants to die. He wants everyone else to die. It doesn't matter. Oh, for sure. To him. He just wants, doesn't want to do any of it anymore. Mm. How about this though? I think your stuff, your brain must retain something. Neo can fight a little bit. He does. You do see him do it, but he's but not they like probably get real world training. As yeah, well. of course. But also, Agent Smith uploads his entire mind into a person. Mm-hmm. So you must retain. So that, by laws of the universe, means you must retain. <laughs> if you can retain someone's consciousness, ah, uh, I know he's a virus and yeah. inevitable, and uh-huh. I am. And the bad guys whatever. get more skills than good guys. You That's know true. I mean? More punching and kicking. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's weird they switched the Oracle out. I know she died in real life. Yeah. It's weird. Mm. I mean, these days I imagine they would just... Do you think these days if they did The Matrix again, which they are doing, Yes. but let's say they made the original trilogy again, which they are essentially with yes. The Matrix. Look, let's say... <laughs> okay. <laughs> now let's what say, do we say? Let's, okay, let's say if they made The Matrix and they had the CGI technology we have now, sure. do you think they would replace the actor or do you think they would CGI... Do you think they would replace the actor and CGI the old face back on? I... Hmm. I think whatever they do for Carrie Fisher, they'd probably do. Yeah, right. They'd probably use the existing footage. Like, they can move mouths now as well. Sil- and do probably all silhouette. Stuff. Doesn't put matter. Put you could put a different voice to it. That's or true. one that's close enough. And mm. I don't think she was that well-known an actor that people would be be kind of taken out by it. I, I mean, that's true. if that had done it then, it would have. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh-huh. But yeah. Question, Mason. I'm ready. What do you think the broken tile budget in this movie is? Oh, my God. You know what I kept thinking about in this? The, and I think it's a function of me becoming very old. Sure. It's that in the sequence where... Uh, Neo and Morpheus fight, you know, the training program was, as we talked about before. Yeah. When Morpheus puts his knee down, like in the tatami mat, and it all shatters, I'm like, how are you going to fix that? <laughs> it's got to be expensive. You're going to have to take the whole thing out and put a new one in. Do you think they filmed all that stuff with the broken set last? They must have, right? The uh, Like, because they're kicking down pillars and, and whatever and putting holes in floors. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. because that would... Be insane if you did it any other way, correct? Correct, yes. <laughs> okay, good. I wouldn't start with that and then fix it all and then film the rest of the movie. <laughs> so Broken Tiles, there's obviously the lobby scene, but there's also the bit where he gets beat up in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. It's such, a, And it's such a good fight with him and Agent Smith. Yeah, because yeah. you can both tell they got skills, yeah. but also Agent Smith has brute force yeah, and, that's right. and incredible and he's strength and speed. Pretty much magic. Yeah. Yeah, and then the cops beat him up, whatever. The budget, though, speaking of, $63 million, but it made 463 at cinemas. So there and then some made its money back. Not bad. This was M15 in Australia. Do you know if it was R-rated in the US? There's no way of knowing. I know, I wish we could. Anyway. Okay, the whole final act of this movie maybe goes for... 40 to 50 minutes. I'm, yeah, I'm listening. But it's just incredible. Like, in an era, and not even, <laughs> in any history of action, you cannot keep my attention for 50 minutes. For sure, in, yeah. in an action sequence. You just can't. Yeah. But the way... I, this, I stayed all off my springy <laughs> phone the whole time. Yeah, exactly. But this goes from... Like the lobby to the to the elevator shaft to the rooftop, rooftop. to the helic- oh helicopter my God. to the streets to the subway to back into a building. Mm-hmm. And it's I, I guess to a room to, to a, a room, hallway to a regular hallway to a street <laughs> to a phone box. But yes, and I guess it's also a testament to them building the characters in this world, and you like them, and mm-hmm. the stakes keep being raised and whatever. But it's it's so good. It's like absolute. It's just breakneck. Yeah, for but sure. But it just doesn't. Like I think about the like the Avengers finale for like 
Endgame or whatever. I liked it a lot, mm -hmm. but it's kind of one location. It is, yeah. It's yeah. one big mush. One big really. mush. And it's obviously incredible, and I really mm -hmm. like that movie, but this is just like the, the thought that went into this. The, the, the locales. Ah, the mapping. The low carbs to get that fit. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. The minigun minute right in the, oh, right in the middle of that. What do you think of the minigun minute? I like it, but... Well, you, you're, you're too picky on miniguns. I really am. What's wrong with get them? Get one right is all I'm saying. <laughs> all I'm saying is that a, that's some spectacular... And the bullets are falling. They are, yeah, all the casings are falling out, and that's pretty good. But also, like, I want to... And the, he hits all the agents, but they oh, don't you get... Want them, like, I want half. them to get torn to shreds. But they're also magic and whatever. I know, they? but they can cop a bullet. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a good point. They can. I oh, speaking of bullet time. I don't like it. <laughs> but I'm I don't, sorry, what? But I don't like it because I'm sick of it. Oh, right, of course. And I yeah. like the use of it in the subway more than on the rooftop, I guess, because I've seen it less. Yeah, right. But, and obviously, and look, and it's so simple but so brilliant. It's just a series of cameras, yeah. like regular still photography cameras just in a circle. Yeah, uh-huh. And, and that's it. Yeah, for but sure. It's really and, then, and they're just, and they're just yeah. firing constantly, and then they just... In, they put mm. them into a computer, and I guess, and they sequence and they in whatever, whatever order they want yeah. to put it in. Yeah, uh huh. Pioneered in a Bon Jovi film clip, I think. It's my life. <laughs> no, I don't know. But prior to the Matrix, there was only other, one other. I think there was only one I other use it of it. Now I think it was life. Bon Jovi. It might be. It's my life. Google put in it's my thing. put in Bon Jovi bullet time and I see did. what happens. That's what I did. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Oh, no, it it's does a bullet matter. time Wikipedia page. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So bring it up. Doesn't matter whether the Matrix is R rated, but I need to know who <laughs> invented bullet time. Yeah. Apparently, Ma do you remember the video game franchise Max Payne? No. Yes, you do. Of course, I do. You do, and you remember the delightful movie I'm starring the new Mark one, Wahlberg, the new Control, the same people. Whatever. Oh, yeah. is that out yet? Yeah. It's out. Is it good? You liking it? I don't really like it. it no, it, technically, it's amazing. Yeah. What's wrong with it? It just doesn't seem to come together for me, and a lot of the lore is in like. Papers you pick up, and I'm like, I'm not. And you don't pick up. A, well, that's the thing. You skip all the cut. You skip every cutscene. You were burned by Metal Gear Solid Four. You never. You I never think it ruined me. Yeah, I think it did. <laughs> you never. I watched you play a video game, and you're like, nope, not. No, cutscene don't because care. Because it's two thing, people don't care. talking to each other. And then you get to a room and it's like, enter the, use the puzzle, figure out it from the from the manuscript you read. And you're like, I didn't read it. I threw it away. I burned it. <laughs> I can't find it. Anyway, this Max Payne anything. apparently invented bullet time pre The Matrix. Okay. But then they, by the time they had like ironed out, the, and this is in video games, by the yeah. time they'd ironed out the kinks and figured out how they were going to use it. Like apparently initially it was just going to be like you would you would be in bullet time scenes. Yes. Like you'd enter a room and then you'd be suddenly in bullet time in the Max Payne games. Oh, and then they made it a trigger. So then they like, made it a trigger yeah. system. And by the time they'd figured it all out, the mm. Matrix was already out. And so it, I remember thinking, well, they've just this is good, but they've just copied the Matrix yeah. for this. But apparently that was kind they'd of like parallel. Parallel. Because I guess it was to capture like the frenetic gun fights, but make you feel like you're not just losing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was kind of because you if you're jumping in real time, yeah. it's not. And it was also, good. you know, the the mate and the Matrix and Max Payne had very similar inspirations in that realm, which I think was like Hong yeah, Kong action cinema, absolutely. where they would do it would there would be slow mo leaping and stuff like that, but you yeah. know, not not to that CGI extent. Actually, Max Payne came out in 1998. There you go. So maybe it was a little bit before. All right then. Maybe I didn't play it till '99. Yeah, maybe it's three. I don't Max know. Max Payne three was really good. The the modern one, modern one. It's like six years ago. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. That one was good. Oh, I heard people don't like that one. It's mm. the most stylish game of all time, in my opinion. Because of the shirts. <laughs> because of the shirts. Yeah, I yeah. think makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, then they kind of they try to replicate it, and there's a few other things they try to do in the follow up movies where mm. the bullet time moment is when a CGI fist hits a CGI Agent Smith as it hits yeah. hit, it's hitting CGI Rain, and it's yeah. like. You don't have to do Steady this. Steady on, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not quite Hubris, there yet. that's what that was. It was like, we can do this, so we should. Anyway, what's the origin of Bullet Time? Was it, was it Bon Jovi? It. Oh, my God. It. I couldn't find it. Wow. Okay. Because the Matrix doesn't want you to find it. I, that's probably true. Carrie Ann Moss is amazing in this movie. I agree. And, you know, she learned to do It took her months to learn to do that scorpion kick, you know, that kick someone in the face over your own head. Yeah. Oh, that's that's real. That's a real thing. Oh, my you can, God. Yeah, that she could do, yeah. You know what's amazing about the, the action in this? And I think you kind of forget about her action sequences in this, but she, the opening one is her. Yeah. And you just kind of know where everyone is and you kind of know sh what she's about, even though you don't really know, but you know... The you know it just all and the way she's running across the rooftops and the cops yeah. are kind of tumbling and it's just incredible. It's exactly it tells tells a tells a big old story yeah. with very few words. Also, what is great about the f 
I mean, all of them, but the the first one it struck me especially having rewatched it. Mm. There's it's just, it's a very diverse cast, but they never talk about it. Yeah, it's never like how are you do. I mean, there's a moment where where Neo's like, I thought I assumed you were a guy. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. Because Trinity and you were a hacker or whatever. Yeah. But for the most part, she's like just, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for the, it's just you know it's 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 there's there's all races and colors and creeds and bald people and all sorts so of many stuff. Bald people. No right. So many dreadlocks as well. Dreadlocks and bald people. I remember in the rave when the guy's got dreadlocks and he just flicks his dirty dreadlocks. We're not hair. there yet. We'll okay, get to we'll it. We'll get there. I don't like it, Mace. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Uh huh. I love. Okay. There's a few action moments, like tiny moments that. That I really like. Well, Number two one, in particular. where Agent uh, where Neo goes to punch Agent Smith, and Agent Smith locks it, and then Neo flicks him in the neck. That is real quick. exactly what I was going to say. Correct. Pacha. And he goes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But also, and this is a bigger moment. It's the final moment in the lobby where he runs up a guy's body and kicks him in the head. Yes. It's just him. And when he lands with the coat mm. and everything, that's and what we call a big specky. A big specky. Yeah, that's what we do call it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I don't know. What else do you say about this? It's just great. It's oh, yeah. just a great movie. And I wish that we were getting another one that was equally as good. And maybe we will. No. I think it'll be... George Miller did it. <laughs> maybe one of the Wachowskis can do it. Is that what people are saying? It. Some people are saying that. It doesn't make any sense. No. Yeah. I feel like George Miller nailing Fury Road was a real... Maybe. It's a real... I kind of feel like George Miller would probably be better at nailing the Matrix movies now. Oh. But I don't know, mm. actually. He didn't make the first one, though, did he? George Miller. The first babe. I don't know. He was a producer. Oh, he was a producer. I'm kicking right. the city. <laughs> okay, right. Anyway, uh, it's, and then he comes back to life and he flies away. Does he break the Matrix at the end? Because it says system failure. But by the next movie, did they just reboot it? I don't know. I think that maybe was a trace program or something. Great. Yeah. I love trace programs. They're good, aren't they? Okay, what else? What, what, are we missing anything from the first The Matrix? I'm sure we'll get to it in the other two movies we have to talk about now. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right. Is there anything you want to talk about in particular? Um, Rage Against the Machine? Pretty good. I just that's perfect because this movie yeah. is mostly about eating porridge on a weird spaceship. That's right. <laughs> yeah, which is what Evil Empire was about. What a great album. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I've anything. I haven't mm. got anything specifically to say about it yeah. here. I think I've. Well, that, those are all my notes. But yeah. if you if you want to jump back at any point, okay. Feel free to. The Matrix Reloaded was in 2003. Some of those are workforces are also those that eat porridges. <laughs> the lyrics from that song. It was made for $150 million, but it made $742 million. That's quite a lot. Yeah. It, it, it was money do, back. Do you remember the whole, like, it was the, it's the year of the Matrix? Do you remember people talking about that? No. Because they, they released two in a year, which is kind of unheard of. Two sequels in the same year. It was like one in, like, March. Oh, yeah, that's right. April March and then November like or something. Whatever, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There's some good stuff in this movie. Yeah, this is... But it's not good. I don't no, like it. Look, and maybe we, I think maybe we said this last week, but or at some point. We've said it at some point in our lives. Sure. I feel like there is an incredible single sequel in these two movies. You're probably I right. I think if there was some tweaking to this, yep. uh, we would care more about a lot of those characters. Yes. Uh, we would get to the, the point and the quest yeah. way quicker. Mm. We would understand who some of the villains are. Yes. Or maybe... Or spend more time with fewer good characters so you can kind of get to know and like any yeah. of them. You know what, something that on the rewatch of these mm. that I... I it 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 and it threw me off in the, the when I watched them originally. I hated the twist. Yeah. But now I get it. Like I didn't. Here's the thing, and I never thought I'd say this. I didn't get it then, but I do get it now. The architect thing. The architect thing. Like w at the time, I was so it it ups it it upset me the idea that these the first movie was about these people fighting against oppression. Yeah. And then it turned out in the end that. That was just a construct. Of it was a construct, and and that was just you know it it meant that all their efforts were kind of like pointless. Yeah. So it kind of made the whole movie pointless. But I get now that it's like the the whole idea behind it was that an oppressive system will build a system for you to fight within itself for you to yes. fight back against, and then you're like, oh, I'm I'm getting so much done here. I'm but, raging against the machine. Yeah. There, and then it's like, yeah, you are raging against the machine. You're doing really well. Buddy. You're buying all the correct products. Yeah. I was speaking to somebody recently who was like a lot of the like 
Was it right. many seconds ago? No, it was oh. about like protests in Melbourne. You got to book in a day and whatever. And, yeah, right. And it's like, well, was that a what a in protest a particular zone? Yeah, you be exactly. In the it's zone, like, well, that yeah. doesn't make any sense, does mm, it? No, that's not the point of it. Yeah, I know. I see what you mean, but I still take umbrage with the way that it is presented poorly. Oh, the as whole, in you yeah. walk into a room and a guy's like, "So this is how it is." But I remember there was. It's way too muddled. The the way he discusses it. Oh yeah, he's absolutely. He's not clear yeah. in what he's saying. Yeah, and it's not even really a conversation. It's a no, it's a minute of it's him an speaking, and dump. then there was like ah. Uh, but that's the whole movie. There's a whole, there's a there's a the sequence where they meet the Merovingian for the first time. It's like a full five minutes. Yes. like a monologue of him just talking about <sighs> causality or whatever it is. And who cares about that character at all enough to even revisit him in yeah. another movie? Exactly. Yeah. God. Mm. Also, I feel like the fact that Neo, and maybe it's because they got upgraded. That being the said, mm. that being said, the idea of him I think is good. Sure. The idea that he's a survivor of a previous matrix yes. who's escaped and brought his horrible monster companions with him. Which also makes sense for the twist to be like, because there was a previous matrix. Yeah. And yeah. et cetera and so forth. But you're right, this movie has a very this movie has a very strong start, I think, the, the reloaded. Yeah, but I think also immediately, and I remember this at the time being like why is he having any trouble with any of these agents? Because, well, they've been upgraded. But yeah, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know that. But it shouldn't matter. Well, I mean, I like he the... He fights Smith, like, one-handed. Yeah. Without no, even looking at him. Yeah, and I think... They're not that different. And I think the biggest failing for me of these this, these sequels, the second one especially, the Reloaded he especially... He can fly into them. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> but, I mean, look, I lo- okay, let's take it as a given that it takes him a second to... Let's say it, it, he doesn't... They've been upgraded to a point where he's like, okay, they will give me a tiny little bit of trouble okay. initially until I figure out how to jump into them or whatever. Sure. I think the idea that Neo is still a main character in the second one is its biggest failing, I think. Okay. Because there's no, again, there's well, he's no... not in the third. Yeah. There's no dramatic tension in any of the fight sequences because, again, he doesn't break a sweat. Yeah. And, like, you know, you know in the in the sequence where he fights all the... the Vampire werewolf guys. I remember you specifically talking in about the, this in the, the in show, the yeah. in the that's on the staircase or whatever. Like he fights him for like ten minutes, and then one of them hits him full in the hand with a sword. I think that's early on in the fight yeah. as well. Yeah, and it, and it gives him like a tiny little like it draws one drop of blood. Yeah. And, he's, and the Merovingian's like, he's just a man. See, and it's like <laughs> that would take a man's hand off. Yeah, you're gonna have to hold him down for like an hour and hack at him. <laughs> If you could hold him down, even you can't. So <laughs> exactly, yeah. And so I, th- I think, and and again, the, this the second movie. There's elements to like. Well, everybody says he's the Messiah, and you yeah. know they they, and when he goes to Zion, they go to him for blessings and all that sort of stuff. Well, they give him spoons. Yeah, they give him spoons, and there is you know there should be more of a struggle of like, well, what am I now? And I would have yeah. been way, I would have way more interested to see him like you know, go to some distant area of Zion and just have to think about stuff. And at the same time, the version of him that's in the Matrix is just up in the mountains. Yeah, right, you know, okay. Because like he, f- he's like, why don't? Why am I, Why would I even fight? Like, I don't... Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of... Yeah, that makes more sense to me. Then mm-hmm. Also, he could just... He could do all of the missions all at once. Well, Presumably, exactly, he could yeah. also duplicate himself if he wanted to. He can pretty much because there's a moment where he there's some weapons, some size on the wall, and he just telekinetically pulls them off the wall. Yeah, right. And he never does that again. There's no so rules. I'm like, yeah. what? What can no and rules. can't you do? And he and there's a moment, you know, and the the in Reloaded, the highway chase is incredible. Like that's yeah. ge- that's genuinely they built a real highway. Still, and still holds up, but he does just fly in at the end and rescue everybody. Yeah. it's in a in a very plasticky CGI kind of way. There's also if these agents are upgraded, yes. I feel like. More like Morpheus fights one, and and I know, and, and he's on the roof of a truck, yes. and he does way better. I know he gets help and whatever, but at this in the start of the first Matrix, they're like nobody has ever won yeah. any of these ever. Yeah, but here's he's the difference now: Morpheus believes in himself. Do you so think you that need... makes a difference? Yes, I think there's still limitations on what you can do, and I know he gets help, but I think there's also examples of agents throughout this. If that are not as dangerous as they were in previous ones. Well, they're they got not, a sunglass upgrade. They, they certainly they, but do. There's a limited and they're am- different guys. Exactly. They're and slightly there's, different and guys. And there's a limited... The Matrix has a limited amount of RAM, so if you give them a sunglass <laughs> upgrade, they get a karate downgrade. I'm just putting... The, 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 the controllers of the Matrix are like, God, oh, do we make the sacrifice? They are very... The sunglasses do look a lot cooler. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why they need the sunglasses. Because it's cool, I guess. It's cool. 
I, I've just written here, everyone's got the dumbest glasses in this movie. This has by far the dumbest glasses yeah. of all the movies. Here's, here's two things that do not date well mm. in the world of fashion. Yep. Ties and sunglasses. Yeah. They don't. Because are they thin or are they thick? What exactly. patterns do you use? Exactly. Do you put a little pin in it, whatever they're called? Exactly. What are they, what do, are they called? Do your glasses have frames or no frames? Well, it was 2002 or whatever, so no frames. No, no frames, no, yeah, exactly, you. yeah. Do you think Zion is interesting? No. Yeah, me neither. No. I thought it was interesting when they came in and then there's the people who guard the gate are in oh, a that's virtual fun. Yeah, that's really great. white space. Yeah, that's good. But then it's just pipes and yeah. gantries. I li- yeah, that was a sort of an... Interv- I Again, I think this movie is quite... This this movie, to me, in the cinema, held so much promise until they got past that bit. I'm like, oh, they're using the construct in a really creative way. Yeah. You know, it's just this... It's this I wonder how else they were exactly, using it. Exactly. It's, bro- <laughs> it's this, you know, this broken down, barely functioning... Hulk yeah. of a, a thing, but when you go into their minds, it's this beautiful white yeah. space and it's all precision and neat and clean. And then once they get to Zion, I'm like, Aww. yeah. And this mo- this movie doesn't even really kick off probably till like the 45 minute mark. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Also, in in the, like the 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 new tank link. Yes. And I like this actor. He's in like Lost and stuff. He's mostly yelling at his son. Where's his son or whatever. Uh-huh. But he just reacts to things. That's what he's there for. Yes. There's a moment where Neo catches. The people on the truck. And the, he goes, yes! And he puts his arms up. There's uh-huh. the moment where he catches Trinity when she falls. And he's like, he caught her. Yep. Yeah, we all saw it. Yeah. We're all watching the movie. I remember at the time thinking this is kind of a dumbing down. Yeah. Like this is, okay, well, I remember thinking, well, the original was a cool indie film from that cool indie brand of Warner Brothers. <laughs> and this one, this one, they've really dumbed it down for the sheeple. You know what I mean? Yeah, Because I've escaped the Matrix and they're still, <laughs> they're still in the Matrix. There is a funny moment in, with Link, though, in, mm. the, se- in the sequel where, uh, and again, a great, a great concept in this movie that I really enjoyed, which... They didn't really explore enough in at all. Uh, is the idea of the key maker, and he can give you a door to anywhere. Yeah. I love that idea, and you know, it, it it fed into the idea of like it's a virtual world and it's a video game. Yeah, there's shortcuts kind of and whatever. Exactly, yeah. but there's a moment where uh, Neo escapes the 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 uh, Merov- Merovingian's castle, and Link's mm. like, "You're not going to believe this. You're in the mountains." Oh yeah, that actually, yeah. And he's yeah. like, "Because he is in the he's mountains, mate." You the mountains. You're right. Actually, that that's a good bit. Mm. Uh, the rave is no good. I don't like it. Mm. Uh, don't put it in there. And also, but I also kind of like that Morpheus is a kook. People are like, none of this prophecy shit. Yeah, we need right. To, we need to know whether we can open this weird, jammed up, grimy mm. door. <laughs> like that's that's, that's the, it. Exactly. That's a priority. Yeah. Uh-huh. And Morpheus is like, I believe in the savior. And people are like, I don't know about any of this prophecy shit. Also, yeah. because the prophecies in this universe, mm. they're just calculations. They're That's not true. actual prophecies. You're not really seeing the future. They're estimations of what could but potentially happen. But if happen. anything, that's more accurate. Yeah, a, maybe. Yeah. But it's also, you're not literally seeing the future. But, so what surprised me at the start is Neo has that dream about Trinity falling. Oh, yeah. So is he making those calculations in his brain? In his brain? I guess he is. Maybe he is, yeah. Unless he's magic. But I don't think he's magic, basically. Oh, what if it's the Matrix <laughs> 4, Neo is magic? Look, he's just magic, all right? You know who does a really good Agent Smith? I'm ready. Who? The guy who gets Agent Smith in his brain. Doesn't he though? <laughs> he's yeah. so good. Yep. He's really good. Yeah. Mm. He's he, he's more in the in the third. But I just feel like this movie, it's just like philosophy 101. Yeah. Given to the audience in the most boring way possible. Yeah. Again and again. The, di- the 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 dialogue suffers in this one and the second one. I think I've said I don't know if I said it on the podcast, but I've definitely said it to you in real life. The sequels have always felt to me like. When the Wachowskis were in high school, mm. they get they got a big book and they wrote all the cool stuff that cool heroes would say in cool movies. Like whoa, yes, exactly. Or dodge this. No, no, no. But I That's mean, a good more, one. No, it is. But I mean more for the sequels. Okay, and then sure. they were like, okay, well, we've got to we've got to restrain ourselves in the first one. Yeah. But then when they were given free reign for the sequels, they went, okay, it's time to put some cool cool guy dialogue. Yeah, Let's right. get more cool guy dialogue. Here we go. There's some cool guy dialogue in this, isn't there? Better believe it. <laughs> Uh, the rave's no good. Uh, yeah. The dread thing in particular. Uh-huh. I worry about where everybody's showering, if at all. Obviously, there's limitations on water. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wouldn't go to that weird rave. I think I'd go in like a nice virtual reality and be like... I mean, there's plenty of water, but it's all it's all that pink goop. Yes. Well, it's they get all, siphoned off. Actually, they the do goop. show like a water tank. There's a moment where Neo is walking with like the guy who runs the city. And he. I thought he'd play more of a role. And I thought it would be revealed that he was the previous one. And that, even though the previous one was like 100 years before. Yeah, right. Or something like that. Because mm-hmm. it happens every, it cycles every 100 years and it's happened seven times. 
and for the spoiler alert, but, but for those, uh, we're well into it. But those people, <laughs> if you are the one and you choose to return to the source, then you get to pick like 23 people and you repopulate Zion and you start again. Mm. So I thought that maybe that guy is the previous one and he had chosen like the council yeah, and right. the previous group of people. So the council council's there to kind of like to run Zion, but it's a farce. They know that it's heading to this point yeah, right, where the uh-huh. cycle is going to start again. And I think maybe, don't you think that would have been an interesting idea to explore where the upper management or whatever knows know, that this fate yeah. is coming and they're yeah. just in place to make sure that everybody gets there. Yeah, I get, that is absolutely true. You're yeah. right. And and also, it is odd, like if the cycle is only 100 years or what have you, mm. there sh- wouldn't there be some people who are still around and remember it and are like, yeah, I remember. I mean, it's, 100, like, it's 100 years is a long time. No, I know, but I mean also, wouldn't they be like, yeah, I remember when there was just like... 30 of us. Oh, yeah, that's a really good that? point, actually. I mean, they're freeing people, aren't they? Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess. Yeah. And so I guess a- according to them, the war is 100. This modern war is 100 years old. Yeah, and right. It's the, and it's the most, it's the only revolution there's been. Yeah, right. I assume, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the... Bur- it really does your bloody head. It, it does, doesn't it? It makes you think. The Burley Brawl is really good and then it's not. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a de- very there's, def- definitive line where it stops being good. But there is glimpses during it of like, oh, don't do that. And then they go back to like regular people fighting with people with Agent Smith's face stuck on the top. <laughs> and it looks so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then it's just spinning around nonsense. I think I remember I remember seeing a making of, it's probably on the Reloaded DVD, where you see Hugo weaving like with some of his many stunt doubles and he's like, look at that widow's peak. Like, <laughs> really makes you think about your hairline when you see somebody else with your widow's peak. <laughs> They should have done more with ghosts and werewolves and things. I agree. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah, Yeah. it's interesting. Well, it is interesting, and it's and again the whole Merovingian backstory that apparently one of the Matrixes was just this horrible nightmare world for some reason. Yeah, like that would get people to be (laughs) to peaceably stay in their pods. Hey, guess what? There's vampires chasing you all the time. (laughs) So you don't have you don't have time to think about whether you want to be free of the system if there's a mummy (laughs) following you slowly down a hall. You know why I like the the highway chase as the best action sequence of this? Because the because that truck nah, like, I don't crushes like, together I don't like, like a concertina. I because it's different than everything else in this movie. Mm. And and again, it's like they're fighting in the car, they're fighting on top of the yeah. truck, they're on a bike, they're on a whatever. Yeah, yeah. And mm. otherwise, it's just like we're in a hallway and we're punching each other. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. But anyway, maybe that's just me. It's interesting also that the only the only members of the Merovingians henchmen who get any kind of proper superpower or like any play like that are the two ghost twins. Yes. Like the alleged vampire guys and the, the werewolf guys. Well, they do. They have pointy teeth. I would have is loved it. it if, but you don't even really know because I'm fairly confident I didn't notice that for like 10 years. Yeah, I think right, that's like uh-huh. a recent revelation uh-huh. to me that those guys were supposed to be werewolves and vampires or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're like CW vampires where they're, or werewolves <laughs> where they're not really... Like Teen Wolf yeah, is not right. really a werewolf, is he? No, exactly. They've yeah. got hairy chests and that's weird for the CW. I agree. Because they're not s- beautiful, smooth boys. Yeah. Uh, we know in Trinity when he catches Trinity. Yes. Just get her to a phone. Just get out of there. Well, that would work, wouldn't They'd it? they put on a roof and yeah. be like, you're dying. Also, what, what to do? Also, there's a huge element, I think, of the sequels where it's like, it's so important that Trinity lives. She must live through all this. But in revolutions, she just drives him to the place. Yeah. And then she's killed. But she only and drives him to the place because he can't, I guess. But they could have got anyone. I agree. Yes. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying, yeah, there's no, yeah, I agree. And it kind of feels like you brought her back just to kill I'm her. I'm going to guess love. Movie. I'm going to guess love. Yeah, I guess love. Did you buy, if, did you, if you did you buy the love story in, over the course of the three movies? I don't know. If I, but you know what? I was going to say no, but I just finished it up before you came around. Mm-hmm. And the moment where she's dying and they spend that last moment together, yep. it's actually quite good. And mm. I think that's also because I really like those actors and I like their yeah. performance mm. in this movie. And also everyone else in this movie I don't care about. Right. Except for so Morpheus. you had to latch onto somebody. Yeah, I had to watch, and they're great. And uh-huh. I like them both. So, yeah, uh-huh. yes. Did, did you buy it in the first movie? Where, no. It felt where she's like, I, it's a, well, you can't die because <laughs> I'm in love with you. I'm in love with the one and that's you and I love you. Yeah. Really? Get up ten minutes with him. There's a, yeah, but I mean, she's been watching. But I guess him. She, she has been stalking him over the Matrix for some amount of months, and that's know. cool. Yeah, it is very cool. <laughs> so cool. Should we get to the third one? Yes. Great. This one was also made for 150 million dollars. It was the year of the Matrix. I remember the year of the Matrix. <laughs> oh my god, it stands out like a burning beacon. The year of the Matrix. But it made the least of all. It made 427 million, and I think it's because the second one 
initially I remember it getting reviewed very well, but I walked out going, I don't know. And then I thought, well, if the third one kind of explains some stuff, then yeah. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people are like, I don't care if yeah, it explains exactly, it or not. Yeah. I shan't be seeing it. I remember we saw the second one together, but we didn't see the third one together. I think I saw it with Insensitive Dave. Oh, yeah. Because I was at university at the time or whatever. But mm-hmm. it's, um, I think on the whole, I enjoy it more. Except for that giant Zion battle, which is a which lot is of most movie. of the movie, it's <laughs> yeah. almost all of the movie, yeah. yeah, yeah. I find it interesting though that they introduce the idea of the not all the programs are weird, sinister French men or we- werewolves. Some of them have a little girl and they just want to live their yeah, life right. in the Matrix. And, and, but if you if you um, if your program becomes uh, unnecessary, you have to go back to the source. Yes, to take the train back to the source, and you you were just. It's allegedly. And Bruce it's allegedly like, get off my train. Exactly, it's allegedly AI heaven, but it seems like it's just more of a trash compactor kind of situation. I'd imagine it would be. Yes, mm. uh, I like how they do the lobby again, but it's upside down. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't think it's. Uh, well, I remember seeing that in the movies and gone, wow, they're really out of ideas. They're doing upside yeah, down lobby. Right. <laughs> okay. But that's the thing. Like it's. Uh, there were so many. There are so many good ideas. You know? Yes. Imagine if they'd packed all all the good ideas of two and three into one. You'd be like, oh my god. Yeah. Werewolves, trains, <laughs> a man on a train. Bruce Spence. Bruce Spence is there. He's kind of like that guy on the train from the movie Ghost. Exactly. In a lot of ways. Monica Bellucci gets ten lines and then one line. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you never see her again. Never see her again. <laughs> She's probably won a whole bunch of awards in France, France or Italy or whatever. You know what I think is interesting in this movie? What? In terms of making what? it. What? At the same time. What do you think is interesting? We've talked about this, but they made Enter the Matrix concurrently with this. Enter the Matrix being a the video game. A video yeah. game which has additional footage which like they 45 shot. 45 minutes or yeah. something. And it's all at the story of J.D. Pinkett Smith. Directed Wachowski's it, okay. directed it. Yeah. All the actors are in it. Yep. So it's J.D. Pinkett Smith and whoever plays Ghost. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's their, it's their adventures. And I think it's an interesting idea for a video game because because you're not Neo so you can't just do anything. Yes. You're still uh-huh. limited by you know your whatever it's kung fu. It's a And I do... It's wa- the Timon and Pumbaa of this. And yes, <laughs> They're the is. Timon and Pumbaa. It really Pumbaa. is. And I think it's all. There's too much of her in this movie as well because yeah. she's not that interesting. And the, and the but the and the downfall of that though I think is that you are supposed to as as switched on consumers you are supposed to have played yeah. that I think. So then when you see them in the movie you go, oh, oh, I yeah. get it. I now I relate, and that's why you also had to watch the Animatrix. So you yes. go, okay, the, I you know I respect the kid because he escaped the Matrix on his own. Good and, on him. And etc. I expect but no, that twenty six year old. Exactly, but nobody, yeah. did, but nobody did. So no. And even if you did, I mean, I haven't played all of it. I've played some of it, but I don't think there's anything in there that you'd go, well, that changes everything. Yeah. And I also think filming these back-to-back and a video game really fucked this up. Oh, yeah. Like, I think it's muddled because they probably tried to do too much. And it's probably a case of, like... And the Animatrix, of course. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think it's probably a case of, like, uh, maybe even the, even the Wachowskis were confused as to what was going to go where, like... Yeah, right. Or, like, you know... Or it maybe even in the you know the writing process of like okay well we're gonna put these characters here so that when and 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 then we'll put them in the movie and then people are like well I didn't I didn't see them in the game so yeah. but in their minds maybe it's all it was the all one, one thing. thing and they're like okay well people are totally gonna relate to these characters but, but I but even then I don't always think that more is better yes. and I think in this this is a good example would of you say less is more less is better would you say show don't tell I would say do don't tell measure show, don't twice cut once, once never tell. Trust and perceive. Trust no one? Some. The truth is out there. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, I enjoy Government that... Government covers up experiments. <laughs> Correct. I enjoy that uh, Smith is like the opposite of Neo. I think at the time I was like, that's kind of bullshit. But now I'm like, yeah, I'd imagine that the, there would be a counterpoint to this guy who's just gone completely rogue and wild. And he's not doing what necessarily the Matrix thinks yeah, he's going to do. Right. Uh-huh. And so there would maybe naturally be a counterpoint. I think also off the back of like Star Wars, the new Star Wars, I'm like, oh yeah, they did that in Star Wars as well. And Ray oh, and yeah, right, so okay, I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, uh-huh. fair enough. And, and of course in the se- in the third one, we get kind of like the oppressed being Neo and the oppressors mm. machines having to team up yes. or make some sort of pact. 
after the peace, face peace, screams at him. Yeah, exactly. Some yeah. sort of peace accord so that they can get rid of this yeah. weird chaos, this agent of chaos, this joker, if you will, yes. of, of this movie who just wants to bring everything down. He's like, they're like, okay, well, if you want this, if you want this system to survive, yeah. you got to get him. Do you want to jump ahead to the ending? So the way I perceive it is that they cancel each other out as part of it. But I've also I was reading about it a bit online, and other people say that with Neo returning to the source, that uh, connects Smith to the source, and can, he gets yes, deleted. he gets deleted. He gets put in the cr- trash yeah. compactor, and, ba- and also from him when he kills Neo his purpose is then he's done mm, so yeah, he doesn't right. so he, when he's so his purpose is done he's in Neo which is connected to the Matrix this means he's deleted is that how that's correct that's, that's what how, happens that's okay how, yeah. good mm-hmm. so I did get it right eventually you sure did and I think also at the <laughs> it's time, only been 16 years but the thing is when it happened at the time I just went I don't care I don't care why it happened I'm just glad it's done <laughs> I'm just glad it's over yeah, yeah right but now I, I think about it I'm like that's kind of good I kind of I think that's a kind of a, a good wrap up to mm. how you would beat do you that think guy. It would, do you think it would be better if they used the Path of Neo version where all the agents <laughs> turned into a giant agent? Giant screen. like car robot man. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, cool. I I know that game kind of gets kicked a bit, but I actually love that game. At the time was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a bit wonky, ads. but it's, it's for the ads. Yeah, all the good stuff though. Mostly that game is the Matrix, where you do the stuff in the Matrix. Yeah, and it's like remember the upside down lobby. I'm like, oh, I don't want this one. Remember the ants? Yeah, I remember the ants. <laughs> I'll do it, but I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what is horrific in this? Talking about body horror. Oh, yes. When he just gets the cables to the eyes and his just eyes are just burnt out of his head. Yeah. And it's just the way he is for the rest of the movie. Yeah. He's just blind yep. in the most horrific way possible. But he's not. I mean, he can see the Matrix yeah, or but, something. I mean, he can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do you want What would you prefer? <laughs> oh, regular eyes. Thank you. Yes. 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 Regular functioning eyes yeah. that have never. T- had the touch of a bike of a high voltage electrical <laughs> wire. And you know what I think maybe the, the mech stuff would have benefited from? Mm-hmm. If say you had have kept Tank alive or at least build up some characters that you care about. Mm-hmm. Or have it be run by Morpheus. So that battle isn't like remember General What's his name you saw for two seconds in the first movie? Yeah. Now he's the final stand. Well that's I mean okay, exactly and like and I guess and I think also the the final battle also sort of and, and some of those characters are kind of, they're just very kind of tired war movie tropes. Yeah. Like there's the gruff general and, and the kids, the, together, and the soldier. kids, the rookie guy, you yeah. know, and then they kind of like, but then they save each other's lives or whatever happens. And it's like, well, I, now I respect you. Now. Yeah. yeah. It's a good movie. Wasn't it? <laughs> Not especially, but you know what they, what they lacked in characters, they made up for with giant mechs holding their guns sideways. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> oh, so good. And there's moments like, what's how's Tank's sister going to get out of this? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? You know? I do know. Also, it's weird how they're like in the first movie, our only defense against the EMP. EMPs. But then in this follow-up movies, all those ships have machine guns on them. Yeah. Maybe they put them on, but yeah. maybe if they only put them on recently, maybe you should have put them on earlier. Maybe they don't let Morpheus have a machine gun. That's probably a good point. Because he's a kook. Cause they're he's like, a don't, nut? don't let him have a gun. Because he will go buck wild on those squiddies. And they're going to draw. And he's going to be like, I'm doing this to find the one. And, and then they'll come and destroy, destroy Zion. You know what I mean? There is a very good moment where uh, they see the sun. Hello. Or one of them sees the sun. Uh-huh. The other one sees a weird glowing matrix universe. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. But I like that bit where they mm. see the sun. And there's a... There's a bit where when they see the sun, oh yes, uh, when the sun, one is of them the, sees the one sun, one of them sees the sun, but they look through the windscreen. There's like a there's like a perspex kind of reflection scratches around the circle of the sun is what what you see when you look through perspex. Uh-huh. And I'm like, that's a good little detail. I'm glad one of them at least saw the sun. Me too. <laughs> It's the little details, you know. Life is all yeah. about life is all about perspex, you know. Yes. Some would say it's percep- perspective, but I would say it's just mostly perspex. About perspex. Yeah. In the final battle with Smith, it's technically good and whatever, and I think it's okay up until the point where they just start flying. But also, yeah, we've seen them punch up so much. It's loses its all its impact, yeah. doesn't it? And I think, but and that's the thing because I think you know, if I remember correctly, uh, the impetus behind the Matrix in the first place mm. was how do you make superheroes in the real world? Right. Like we want we want characters to be able to do crazy kung fu stuff and flying about, but we don't want them to be, okay, well, they got hit by radioactive waste and now they can fly or whatever. Okay. The idea was like, how? Do, what's a novel way of, of doing that? And it's like, well, if the world isn't real, then 
they can do anything kind of thing. If yeah. It's, 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 if a, good it's idea. a simulation, they can change it. And I mean, and this is kind of what it, that, that, like, if this were just a straight ahead superhero movie, that's what this would be leading up to. It'd be two people flying around a destroyed city, smashing into each other. Yeah, that's probably true. So perfect success is what Absolutely I'm saying. Absolutely perfect success. Uh, and, and you know, when Agent Smith at the end is like, why are you still fighting? How, wh- how this is impossible. Why don't you give up? Because mm-hmm. he, he's always like this. <laughs> like it doesn't. <laughs> Come on. He's very stoic. Why he's would he? From, he's learned it from everyone in Zion. Why you know those he, fun-loving Stoics in in bloody Zion. Why would he mostly let you hit him, even if he kind of knows where it's yeah, gonna go? Exactly. Don't be an idiot. No, all right. You can hit me a few more times. <laughs> don't worry about it. I mean, I guess he does at the end. He returns to the source and etc. and so forth. Uh, this is my last comment about this movie. Mm-hmm. Do they have to clean the port in the back of their head? Like someone, like a, like a, or, or like you go to plug into the like matrix, a Q-tip. yeah, or you yeah. go to plug in the matrix and it doesn't work, and then someone has to go <laughs> in, the, in the back yeah. of your head. Really good question. Yeah, uh-huh. you'd have to clean that out, you right? Have to clean it out. It would have to be in a way. Part of it would have to be linked directly to your brain, obviously. That's true. So would there be exposed brain in there? You don't go poking Maybe around not. with that. Don't get. Don't be sticking put stuff a, put in a there. Put a Q-tip in there and just. <laughs> it'd have to be like a. But it's quite. But you, you'd need like a. Like a pool cue with a wet rag on the end of it. <laughs> yes. Smoosh it in there. You know? Do you want to talk about the comic that a lot of this took from as we wrap oh, this up? Oh, we can talk about yeah. that. One thing I do like about the, the final uh, Matrix movie is there's a moment in it where uh, Morpheus and Niobe are talking. Yes. And Morpheus hasn't really changed anybody's mind. And he goes like, I think he says, he says something along the lines of like, I thought you didn't believe in the one. Yeah. And Naomi's like, I don't, yeah. but I believe in him, which yeah. I think was a nice. And who did she point to again? Neo. Okay, cool. She doesn't believe she doesn't believe that Neo is the one, but he she does come to believe that he is a guy who's gonna you know try his best. Which I guess is true yeah. in the end. He did try his but best, but he also was the one. He was the one also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Because at the end of the first one, he was definitely the one, if you recall. <laughs> yeah. He was, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's called the Invisibles, right? The the comic that this. Borrowed from? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Sure. Well, you know well, more I mean, about I mean, I mean, You know, allegedly. Uh, so there's a lot of imagery here, though. I'm just bringing oh, up you some brought, stuff Oh, is, is yeah. like a side-by-side comparison? I mean, there's a lot of the, the glasses stuff. Oh, yeah. So, well, the so, interrogation. Well, yeah. I mean, so The the Invisibles is a is by a comic book written by Grant Morrison. Uh, oh, which I said, is, oh, sorry, I said Warren Ellis. Okay. I'll get letters. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is, uh, it's basically a, uh, the world as we know it is an illusion, uh, or it's, it's, and... There is kind of an alien presence on Earth that is preventing humanity from seeing our true potential, mm. and the only people who uh, know this and can defeat them is a group called the Invisibles, uh, who are led by like a bald-headed guy with sunglasses on, yes. uh, and and a group of people with bizarre powers, and they're searching for a, a kid who ha- is their sort of uh, named Jack Frost, I think, who is their uh, snowman. He's a snowman, but he's also their 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 potential savior. Yeah, and right. you and you go, okay, well that's kind of that's quite. I mean, it's pretty generic. It's pretty and, generic, and there's yeah. all, all these all these superhero movies they're looking for a savior or whatever. Yeah. But there is a scene in The Matrix where they capture Morpheus and they torture him, and Agent Smith compares so humanity to, to a virus, and, and that yeah. that scene is pretty much verbatim in an issue yes. of The Invisibles. Like they, they capture King Mob, who is the leader of The Invisibles, the bald-headed, sunglass-wearing guy, and, yes. and they're basically like, Listen, trench coats and all. I hate this place, and it's a humanity's a virus. You come in here and you you ruin everything and you move on, kind of thing. Yeah, and there's like the bit with the mirror hand, like the, this is a bunch yeah. of stuff in here. It's yeah, not, yeah. it's not all, it's not direct, but also doesn't. Don't Warner Brothers own this comic? Well, yeah, Warner Brothers own. They they Vertigo is an imprint of DC. Yes, it's not around anymore. I don't think, but. Uh, yeah, so they own it and they can basically do whatever they want with it. And they you know, did. They do you reckon did. they gave him a, cu- a kickback from this? I'm sure we've talked about I this. I wonder about that. They should have. For a while he was like the head of DC, the comics division, like their creative, uh, you know, their, just their overall creative direction. Right, okay. And he's written on all the all the big... I mean, you know, just the idea that he's... Uh, I, I wouldn't want to suggest that he has gotten anywhere other than from sheer talent because he's very talented. So, so yes. many of my favourite comic book... Works are from him. Yes, but I think if they were like, well, we've got we've got to choose between him and another guy. I remember that time we ripped him off. He didn't sue <laughs> us for a million dollars, and we made a billion dollars yeah. off these movies. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, yeah, diminishing returns. But I think this is a really good time to bring it back, though, because uh, first of all, I've just watched them, so they're fresh in my mind. That's right. So they should do a sequel they tomorrow. Should do a sequel, but also that yeah, there were so many unexplored ideas here, and it is a world that uh, when this finished, I was like, I'm done with this. Yeah, right. But now I'm like. 
No, I'd seen, definitely seen another one of these. Exactly. What would their take on TikTok be? How do they fix his eyes? Is, t- is TikTok involved? Is TikTok involved? Yep. Can We're TikTok fixing fix his eyes. eyes? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, some kind of filter, I assume. Yeah, at probably. The top, big cartoon yeah. eyes. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming they just give him a new body or whatever. Or probably do they just fix his eyes? Probably a bit moji. Yeah. <laughs> yes, maybe. So, but Trinity's also coming back. I wonder whether that's a simulation thing or a flashback or whatever. No, because so. the potential of the Matrix is infinite. Yes. You'd think. I mean, it's mostly kicks and jumps. It's almost and exclusively flips. kicks and jumps and flips. Yeah. Yeah. And cats. Uh, are you, yeah, but you're looking forward to the new one? Absolutely. Yeah. But again... What do you what do? You, what do, you do? In 2004, if they were like, there's a Matrix 4 coming up, I'd be like, I might skip it, actually. Get out of here with this shit. Mm. But yeah. Look, all in all, though, it's, it's quite incredible. I agree. Especially the first one. If only the first one. Mm. But there's other th- ideas in it. And I also quite like the Animatrix from memory. <laughs> okay, good. Do you too? I also do. I remember yes. the fully CGI one that they did. You know, the one that's like completely computer generated. Final flight of the Osiris, yeah. yeah. And I was like, this is where it's at. They should all be like that. But I think that one's probably aged the worst. The worst oh, in I've terms seen, yeah. of like, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, realistic people or whatever. Anyway, do you even know what it's time for, Mason? Is it time for what we read and what we're going to read? You know it is. Nice. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> what are you reading, Mason? Something I watched. Have you seen? You, you probably you've had YouTube Premium for a while, right? Hundred years. Have do you have you seen Wayne? No. It's good. That? It's a it's a it's uh like a it's like a real low rent crime kind of show. Okay. And it's about a kid called Wayne, and he's a he's like a he's like a weird kid who can't let any injustices not be. Like uh, I started this year. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I think it's only got one season. I think it's in it's in like production limbo at this point. Yeah, right. I think there might not be a second season, but it's basically about his his. It's a it's a it's kind of a road trip. He's on a quest to retrieve a car that somebody stole from his dad okay. many years ago, and it's kind of like real, real kind of down to earth and kind of filthy. And do you have YouTube Premium fun. now? No, I'm thinking about getting it because okay. the first ep- the first episode's free, and I'm like, oh yeah, because I opened up a bunch of stuff, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. So I heard I I I watched this, and I'm like, I quite like. It's, it's good. Pretty good. It's there, good there is some good stuff up. There's like champagne. Something. It's got Adam Pally in it. Oh yeah. It's about guys who are groupies of like the biggest rock, r- rap star in the world, but then he dies, and then what? Do, because they've just been partying with him for twenty. Yeah, years, right. What do they do? Got nothing to do or yeah, right. no, and no money. And season one of Cobra Kai, I think, is out yes. for free. If you haven't seen Cobra I Kai, have. you get I've on that. It's fun. Seasons. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Excellent. But anyway, you should check out. Let, let me know what you Wayne, think yeah. about Wayne. I will let you know. I'll be keen to know. Even just watch the first episode. I will. Know. Absolutely, I will. Mm-hmm. Uh, Control. I mentioned it's technically really good. I'm just huh. not. Like it, the mechanics are great. You can throw things to ca- telekinetically at oh, yes. people and all those kinds you've of got things. A, you've got a wibbly wobbly shape changing. Yeah, gun. you do. And but I'm just kind of not wrapped up in the story of it all. Okay. But it's I would say it's still good. And don't let my I'm I'm wrong. So right. everyone would probably so enjoy so it. And, it's, and it's it's a beautiful game. So yeah. you go to like a like this mysterious government building yeah. to sort something out. I did, and in then real you life. get and then you get locked into the building, and you have to go. Oh, you don't. You know, you choose to you choose to be there, and okay, yeah, right. but yeah, and there's supernatural forces from other dimensions Ooh. and so on, and 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 then you get a cool gun and a really the, wobbly gun. There's a thing in it apparently, and I only saw this because I saw it online. Where you, when you read through all the law, there's a bunch of really interesting stuff that really flesh out the world, which probably would have benefited. But you're not going to do that. No. How far? Uh, how far are you into the game? I have no idea okay, then. minutes days yeah. neither here nor there i probably oh. i probably won't finish it if i'm honest i should have got that new destruction derby game because it looks <laughs> rad but uh you get the new splatoon i do like splatoon no my brother likes splatoon uh-huh. i thought it was okay but apparently splatoon's good but uh what was i gonna say did you get Fortnite? did you tell us your review as a as a as an old man played it like for a minute and i'm like this is not for me okay yeah did you do a dance of course i did yeah, I when figured. I put it down, because I hated it, Mason. Oh, mate. Got him. Oh. Uh, Spider-Man life story wrapped up as well. Oh, yeah. So that's Spider-Man throughout the decades, yes. aging in real time. Definitely read it. Did he die really of old good. age? Don't spoil uh, it. Uh, yes, then. Oh, what? Yeah, that's right. Oh, my God. Uh, but also, I'm going to watch the Dark Crystal TV series on Netflix. Huh. I watched the Dark Crystal way too late and went, I probably would have thought this was good. Yeah. But yeah, I I've, didn't. I've, I've received a lot of criticism over my life for never seeing the Dark Crystal or Labyrinth. You've never, still never seen them? Still haven't seen them. How could you not have oh seen them? Oh, my God. I saw both of them late and went, I get it, but I also, I don't get it. They're like, but what about David Bowie? Wibbly, wobbly, blibbly, blobbly. And I'm like, I don't, fine. Wibbly, wobbly, and blibbly, blobbly. Exactly, yeah. 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 
I know, but apparently the new Dark Crystal, regardless, is really good. I and see. it's a whole lot. It's like, you know, a lot of practical puppets and sets and matte paintings and Mark Hamill's in it. And that's a thing. That you By can. practical puppets, you mean they have a lot of life skills? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Carpentry and such? Carpentry. Uh, you could fix a faucet. Change a tire. Exactly. Very good. Yeah. Don't let a puppet change a tire, by the way. It's probably not good. That's what I'm saying. If you go to a mechanic and he's a yeah. little felt man yeah. to go somewhere he's else. He's got no legs. He's got a hand up his bum. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get out of there. How does he get purchase on the tire? Yeah. It's just a hand up his bum. You know what I mean? <laughs> Makes no sense. Yeah. You doing anything else? Uh, no. That's okay. Maybe yeah. I'll play control. Yeah, give it a go. Mm. But you won't though, will you, realistically? I might. Mm. Can I'm I borrow just, a I copy just of control? Or does play st- do play shows not work like no, that? No, they can, yeah. Or did you download it? Did you buy it? No, I bought it, yeah. Oh. Yeah, but I'm not quite finished with it yet, but oh. yes. You come back you come back tomorrow and you can borrow it, I'm, I'm not sure. coming back tomorrow. I'll come back next week. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, Mason. <laughs> nope, I'm coming back next 4 week. 4 a.m. Nope, not <laughs> happening. Not happening. <laughs> Which also is at like four hours from now, yeah, actually. Yeah, right. Uh, next segment then? Oh, yeah, letters. The classic one was the letters, oh, letters. Good volume on that. We love you. Some letters, they're only a take away. You know, they're here right now. We're going to do letters. And huh. that's at one. <laughs> That's bad then. Ten will kill you. Yeah, don't do it. Kill every one of our listeners too. <laughs> we uh, we have places to contact us. Hashtag with Planet Pod on Twitter is a great one. Weeklyplanetpod at gmail That's right. Uh, do you want to do gmails do, and emails yeah, I'll do first? A gmail. Right? Let's find a gmail. Go for it. Uh, here's one. This is from Jose Ignacio uh, Castaneda. Ooh. Uh, I just wanted to see what you guys thought about Phoebe Waller Bridge's She Hulk. That's a good idea. Fleabag. Yeah, I like it a lot. Pretty good, right? Yeah. They could just make her British. Or she can probably do accents or whatever. Uh-huh. But yes. Do you think you'd get her to bulk up as She-Hulk? I don't think she would. She shouldn't. Well, yeah, but I mean like... Don't do that. Would they just... Would they? No, I was going to say. No, no, I'm just saying like it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> it seems like a pain in the yeah. ass, right? Mm. But also like... Because she, she's like... You know, she's a writer and an actor and like an executive producer. Mm. You wouldn't get Kevin Feige to beef up for like to play a no, that's guest a really role point, in a... Yeah. In a, in a I mean, if she was the lead, movie. maybe she'd want to, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Wouldn't you just CGI the character? I, th- I, she, she, I think she'd be yeah. with Jennifer Walters. They do the Ruffalo thing. Yeah, they, they do just the make Ruffalo thing. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's really good casting. Mm. I like that. I like it too. And you don't need to give her a Doctor Strange like American accent. She could just be British. Yeah, that's They're fine. cousins. Maybe she's got a... British cousin. British cousin. People have British cousins. This is a tweet I saw this week uh, from Ben Rosen. I love tweets. When Fleabag looks at the camera, she is looking at Deadpool and vice versa. <laughs> They get sent to you, or is that something? No, that's just a that? tweet. It's just a tweet on the internet. <laughs> that's good. Uh, Steve says on Twitter, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod, what's your favorite year, uh, film of the year so far? I mean, it will be Joker, but until oh my Joker. Oh, God, until Joker changes the game. But then what will be my favorite movie of 2020? Probably Joker. Yeah, I guess Watching so. Joker again. Yeah, that's like with that, that time that Fight Club was your favorite movie for six years in a row. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, my <laughs> God, change the game. <laughs> I quite like Fight Club. I know I still I gets a lot of yeah. flack, but if you if you there's good stuff in there. It's not yeah. just people punching. It's, it's the it's the Rick and Morty of its time. <laughs> yeah, it it had some good stuff to say, but the fans are insufferable and they fight each other. <laughs> that's right. They brought it in the real world, and that's just wrong. I haven't watched Fight Club in yeah, such actually a long to be time. fair, neither have I. So maybe it doesn't. Should we hold rewatch up. Fight Club at some point okay. together as a team? I did start to read or the separately comic. in our own homes. Yeah, that's fine too. Because oh, there's a sequel, right? Yeah, a sequel comic, and I think there's a third one at the moment. But uh, long shot, I really liked. For movies, these are movies. Oh, best right, right, movies okay. of the year. We yeah, got okay. way off that. Yeah, right. And the other one is. Wait, I, can, I, can we just go back to the Fight, Fight Club, Club? Two? Sure. Is it a sequel to the movie or the book? I can't remember. Okay, so in the. In I don't the, think it matters. Kind of does. But it might be the book because in the movie. Yeah, the buildings. The buildings, but yeah. in the book, he just goes back. To, he just goes to a mental asylum. I yeah. think. It picks up where, like, years later, and he hasn't been Tyler Durden, and he's living with um, whoever the... Helena Bottom Helena Carter. Carter's character's name was. But then Tyler Durden, like, comes out and, like, kidnaps oh. his kid or whatever. I'm your neighbor now! Yeah. But he's just doing some gardening. Chaos gardening. <laughs> uh, so, long shot, I really liked. Uh-huh. Um, but I think, oh, that's the Seth Rogen. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's my favorite. Also, I Am Mother, I really enjoyed as a Netflix movie. What about you? I can't remember any movies I've seen this year. Did you see Ready Player One again this year? No. What about Avengers Endgame? That was a good movie. I saw that. That was a good movie. Yeah, what did like, you think of it? Good, good fun movie. What about Shazam? Would you put, say that's up there? It's not, not a bad movie. What did Tom I Hanks think, do I haven't, gone, I haven't gone to rewatch Me Shazam since it came out. What about Kazam? I've never watched Kazam. What about Blam? It's not a thing. Yeah. But what about Easy Off Bam? <laughs> the Clayton <laughs> product. I did. 
Sorry? Is that guy dead? Am I thinking of Big Kev? You think of Big Kev? Okay, great. Yeah. Let me just quickly look up best Google movie. movies of 2019. Movie 29 so I know any movie that okay. I've seen this year. Toy Story 4. That was a good movie. Uh, Lion King. Not a good movie. Bad movie. If I if I Google... In saying... I just <laughs> had this thought the other day. There we go. I didn't like the original Lion King, having seen it as an adult this year. So why would you it's like the still new one? Be- but it's still better than the, than the new Lion King. It really is. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Uh, so... If you Google best movie 2019, it's Avengers Endgame as a first result. Yeah. Then it's Toy Story 4. And then it's Joker. <laughs> Advanced uh, word is very good. Have you seen Midsommar? No, I hear yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah. Spider-Man, uh, John Wick 3, Captain Marvel, Hobbs and Shaw, Aladdin. I really liked Aladdin. Mm. All the Irishmen's coming out. Apparently it's three hours long or whatever. Uh, Us, I wouldn't put that up there. No. Once upon a time in Hollywood. I feel oh, it's I up there for me. I wouldn't put it up really? there. Really? Okay. Definitely not. Because of too much meandering? Yeah. Okay. It's too much watching Brad Pitt drive a car. I love that. That's my favorite I gotta thing in the world. i got to see Fighting With My Family. Ah, oh, Stephen Merchant, right? Yeah, i got to see that one. Mm. People also like scary stories to tell in the dark. And I also want to see Late Night. Well, you can't. Why, why not? It's past your bedtime? It actually is, Mason. It really is. Mm. Uh, anything else? That's about it, I think. Okay, I've got one more tweet here. This is from Tom. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. This is kind of unrelated, but British office or American office, which is better? <sighs> That's a really good question, isn't it? I think British office more consistent. Yep. Though uh-huh. I don't like the special as much, like uh-huh. the finishing one, and I, and the movie is very average. Well, I think, and I think the and it has been pointed out, I think by probably maybe Michael. Maybe I was going to say Michael Scott. Mm. Uh, his real name, Michael Scott. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The the, the American office has hope and the British one doesn't. And I think oh, it depends on the movie. it does. Yeah, but I think like, I mean, what what kind of hope, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're still David Brent, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I never I never really agree with the Ricky Gervais is like, David Brent is not a bad guy and he's just trying to be loved and he's good, a good guy at heart. Yeah. And that's what's endearing about him. But I think he's a total fuckwit through and through. Yeah. Like, I don't think he's redeeming at all. Like, I, I do feel bad for him because he uh-huh. sucks. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very funny. Mm. But I never, I don't think yeah. he's a good man. I, I, I feel like... Uh, Everything he does is for self-interest. Yeah, like I, it, I feel like the American office has like a high point. Like a kind of... Definitely. Fi- like a feel-good high point and you like the characters and you get like, you know... Uh, Jim and Pam get together and you're like... I think there's more characters outside of the core group that you like also. Yes. And I guess that's probably a result of it going for so long. I think so, so too. And I th- but I think it did kind of like... It, it changed it, the game. It did change the game, but I think it... it Legends of the game. But I think <laughs> it's... It, it, to me, it kind of devolved to a I point I think that's where a joke off air that we do. <laughs> I don't think that's a joke that we've just done. Just saying here. everything's a legend, legend of the, of the game. game yeah. uh, I think that there, there, there was a moment where it kind of... <laughs> Fell off the cliff or jumped the shark, if you were. Where yeah. it was just like, oh my god, we're having a dance party in the office. Oh my god, it was just kind of like, yeah, right. it's just you watch it to have some feel good fun with your friends. Sure. And I feel like maybe that strayed too far from the path of what I, I think the office yep. is. But I, I feel like the it's more the, fantastical. Yeah, as well and general, I think the yeah. American office had like that golden point where I'm like, oh, fond memories of those, and I love those characters, yeah. kind of thing. Whereas the British office, everyone's a miserable prick. Everyone's a miserable prick, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I think ma- I think maybe for me the American office takes it. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I um I'm not going to choose, but I will Ooh. say this. I was watching some coward. Bo- you are. Some was a while back. I was watching some behind the scenes stuff, and they were talking about like would they ever return to it? And a, British or American? The British one. And uh-huh. a lot of people were like, Yeah, no, I could see. You know, maybe I'll come back and you know maybe be interesting to see what Dawn's doing in ten years. And Ricky Gervais was like steadfast in. We must never revisit this. This is like we're going to be putting a cap on it and we are done. Huh. It would ruin it to return to these characters. But then he did the David and Brent movie. And he's the only one out of everybody, including Stephen Merchant, who came back to it. Nobody else returned. <laughs> right. I just find that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Was he like, I don't know. <laughs> you just don't know? I just Apparently don't... his stand-up special from last year was the most watched stand-up special. Makes a lot of sense. Does it? No. <laughs> The idea that he would come back, to, like maybe he feels like he's, he's the only genius who could, but like, yeah. I don't know. Like I feel like the again, a lot of Ricky Gervais's best work is with Stephen Merchant. I agree. Yeah, and I don't mind the new series about I'm a prick because my wife died or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. right, right. Mm. Look, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. 
Why would he be the only? Well, like it's, it's that's a mystery to me. If he like this this new revelation is shocking to me that he's like we should never go back. Then he's the only one who brought agree, it back. Yeah. Like is that because he feels he's the only one who has the right to revisit I, those? Cow- I mean, people, he created them. Other so. people didn't want it. I, I've saw an interview with Stephen Merchant. He's like, I, it, it's kind of. I got the impression like he just didn't want to do it. Yeah, right. Because why? But would wouldn't he? that be like you would think that that would kind of put the fear in that you're Ricky Gervais because if he's like, well, if I don't, if I do it, but I don't bring back Stephen Merchant yeah. and it's not as good as the previous one, people will be like, well, it was only good because of Stephen Merchant, but, but he then he did care. it yeah. and it wasn't as good. But he doesn't care, he Mason. He doesn't care because he's, he's rich, rich exactly, <laughs> and he'll point that out to you. <laughs> yeah. I have a very complicated feeling about Ricky Gervais. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, here's, here's another letter. Okay. It's from Harrison Webster. Hello, Harrison uh, Webster. Uh, 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 he sort of like says some nice stuff about the show, and he said the show has helped me through some massive challenges in life, both starting training for the forces, mm, the armed forces, very good, and when my business place was flooded back in 2017, to name a few. So we were there, bailing out. We were we were bailing out your business with buckets. Good to help. We're right there. Uh, he's due to get married on 31st of August. That's done. Well, he's in America, so yes. Yeah, oh, then by the time this is out, then yeah, definitely done. Okay. Uh, it is only fitting that you guys get me through that too. So I'll be <laughs> listening to the podcast on that Saturday before the service instead of my usual Monday morning. Well, oh, then maybe not then. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. yeah. Man, wow. What a world. Well, mm. Good luck. Best of luck. I uh, just well. want to run and give you a big thanks for everything. And wonder if you could say hi to my wife to be Jess as she's never complained about me playing the show, even though she's had no interest in TV, comics and movies being shot up her butthole. Hi, Jess. Uh, well, I got you here, Jess. Um, my wife and I, Claire, have a pod called The Suggest- Suggestible. Oh, my God. And just, like, I know it's a very special day for you, but allow me to, <laughs> to impart this gift If you could like you. and subscribe, <laughs> that would be great on your special day. Often people have said, I don't listen to The Weekly Planet with my partner, but because Claire is, is like a woman in many ways... Yeah then you can get that different perspective. And it's maybe something as a newly married couple that you can listen mm. to together. What I do, oftentimes I'll go to a wedding and they'll have like a wishing tree and you're supposed to put some cash on the, you know, or, or a gift or something. Yeah. What I do is I just get a card with the URL <laughs> for suggestible podcast featuring James and Claire. And I just put it in there and I'm like, you're welcome. The gift. And then I take some cash <laughs> from the, the wishing tree because... I feel like my gift to them is worth actually more <laughs> than the cost of like me being at their wedding to them, like significantly more. So totally. I take some money away and I'm like, very good. I've told you about the the wedding guests that came to my wedding and made money off it through their gifts and or contributions oh, really? to that day. Uh-huh. And it, it's a, it's a, it was a politician. Uh, you know the one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll tell oh, you yeah. after. But oh, yeah. I'd love to get into it, but yeah. I probably can't ever. Uh, anyway... It's been 300 shows somehow. That's right. We've and done it. And it's, it's great. And no one had, people <laughs> said, I was going to say people said we couldn't do it, but nobody said anything. <laughs> so People were, I guess, somewhat bemused that we got this far. Yeah, that's imagine, right. If that's probably the maximum level of interest. But no, it's I, because of this and the YouTube channel as well, but this I feel has really built a really lovely community of people. Who, Absolutely. And, and, and mostly positive, I feel. and Because look, we try not to bang on things too much and mm-hmm. trying to bring too much negativity to I mean we still do obviously but <laughs> you can't help it <laughs> you can't help it there's matrix sequels what are we supposed the to do the joke is coming out what's it gonna be <laughs> but I don't know I know I, I say this every time we hit a milestone but I genuinely appreciate that this yeah. is my job and the biggest part for me is that I can get to be home with my family you know I can I can live you know thank you yeah thank you is what I'm saying but I can live comfortably you know through support of this as long as I don't like do something horrendous uh, and get cancelled, <laughs> then I'd love to keep doing this for as long as possible. Well, surprise, yeah. here's all the stuff you cut out of the podcast. Oh, no. I've been saving it on my phone. <laughs> all the horrible things you've said. That's the episode 300 bonus content. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to sign up to the Patreon, oh, I'll, please, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll put it all up there. The stuff that's going to get James cancelled. But yeah, like we have the nicest community on yeah. Facebook, I feel. We've got a yeah. Facebook group, Planet Broadcasting, great yeah. mates, and it's just funny nice smart civil conversations about all this stuff because like in the grand scheme of things we're just talking about movies and comic books and tv shows then doesn't need to be fights (laughs) over this sort of stuff we're all just here wanting to see some nice movies and see everyone wants to just see themselves represented in movies yes and have a nice time and just just have a bit of fun and it's great to see that people are on board with that yep Um, and we also both agree that it's also PC gone mad. So it's, oh my God, it's absolute <laughs> PC gone mad out there. We're the only ones. We're at the vanguard of fighting back against PC gone mad. 
as you'll find out when you subscribe to the Patreon and hear about all the stuff James has been saying over the years that I've recorded and he hasn't known about. Yeah, but it's weird though because it's been what almost five years now. Yeah, and a lot for me and you has happened in that in that time period. A lot of it I didn't tell people till very long into this That's true. into the show, but. Yeah, it's just it's I can't believe it's been this long. And thank you, Mason, for doing this show with You're me. Very welcome. Yeah. Isn't it weird we haven't aged at all? I know, it's right? Almost My like hair's pod- darker than ever it's somehow. The, the podcast is keeping <laughs> us young. Yeah. Was I my I was, I was definitely in my 20s when I started my YouTube. Yeah, there you go. What a world. What a world. Yeah. Anyway, do you want to bring the show to a close, Mason? Yes. Thank you everybody for listening. We said that yes, just then. We, did. we just we banged on and on about it. But if look, if you if you haven't given us a review, if you listen 300 times and you haven't given us a review, now would be the perfect time. Give us a nice, a good Perfecto. review. It would yeah. be nice. But anything really helps. Though. I do actually have a review here, Mason, I'd like if to you hear don't it. mind. Please. Uh, it's from uh, Holla323. It says, uh, makes my day every play. I look forward to Mr. Sunday Movies and uh, Meso's weekly commentary from Caravan of Garbage, Trailer Breakdowns, or Weekly Planet Podcast. Both personalities are highly entertaining and offer you a great laugh that brightens my day. I love turning my brain off after a, a tough day and listening to these to work through the news and talk about movies or a topic. Uh, keep it up, you too. Thank, Thank you. you. It really we helps shall. the show if you guys could that as well isn't it Mason absolutely and yeah. thank you everybody like it and again if you've if you if you want to tell a friend yeah. like listen there's 300 episodes mm. you, you're going to enjoy one of them definitely <laughs> at least one the we'll take, the we'll take that yeah. play we'll take that one play definitely. Uh, uh, and 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 uh, yeah tell a friend subscribe would be great yeah. uh, if you want to get in contact with us it's weekly planet pod on gmail on facebook on twitter on Bandcamp. Yes. Uh, if you'd like to sort, so I'm at, actually I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. You are. I'm and at I'm, Sunday Movies. And I'm oh, sorry. And that's right. Sorry, I can't believe I ruined the podcast, Mason. Oh my <laughs> god, we are done. <laughs> um, no, but I forgot. I'm also on Instagram. I'm Nick Maso N I C K M A S E A U. Almost to Sunday Movies everywhere. Yes, correct. Uh, uh, if you would like to support the show, you can go to Patreon.com/slash Mister Sunday Movies. Uh, you can Check chuck in a buck, buck. if you'd like. Yeah. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, you can also go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description. Yes. You're going to buy the Matrix box set. Can I just point out as well with that, I got a, I got a thing from them recently that was like, you cannot say that you help support the show with an Amazon link, like in the description. Oh, no. So it's like I had to take it out. Oh, every like 300 every times. Or whatever. And uh, so, yeah. So, look, if you want to use Amazon, you can buy the Matrix box set. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all. That's it. Do whatever you want. There are no kickbacks that's right. or something. Even though there are, I can't say that there are maybe. Mm. I don't know. And well, we don't want to upset Amazon because yeah. they will cancel us. Yeah. They gonna, recu- all your horrible things are in the cloud. They're going to so. buy us eventually anyway. That's true. <laughs> yeah. uh, but also, uh, we, you go, if you want to go to planetbroadcasting.com, you can sign up to our great newsletter from Rob Collings. He's mm. Rob Collings on Twitter. He's the Weekly Planet on Twitter. He's all over the He's place. He's a huge driving force behind all of this as well. That's uh, right. That dude, yeah. Exactly. And of course, the Planet Broadcasting community in general. Oh, my God, so good. Levin's and the admins over at the Great Mates group. That's obviously. right. Mm-hmm. Google Quigley's loving the artwork. He's been there since, That's right. since uh-huh. the early days. Yep. Yeah. He's always fires a Twitter question at me, and I always ignore it. <laughs> no, <that's not> <laughs> uh, th- yeah, thank you to Levin. We have a good and, gag and, and about Collins what questions and, uh, yeah. and Marty and uh, Maisie and Fidel yep. and Surabi, all yes. the all the admins over at the group, uh, and, and Claire, of course, who does so much behind the scenes stuff. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And uh, in the scenes stuff, yeah, always interrupting. That's right. And shush your kid. Yeah, when he's like, hey. <laughs> All right. Uh, Next week. Uh, yeah, I uh, thank you, the Brit Basilisk and Rackham for all these cool things. Of course, yeah. Got some t-shirts on tpublic.com. Yes. You better believe it. I do believe it. Thank you. I also believe it. And next week is it, chapter two. Come back oh, if you okay, want. Yeah. yeah. Plus videos during the week. Incredible. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. And grab that gem, you guys. We will see you next week. And goodbye. Bye. Should we just stop doing it? I mean, 300 is enough, isn't it? It's enough shows. Do you think that's I guess if we just... If we if we just put up one like episode one next week, yeah, enough people will have dropped off and enough new people have arrived that they wouldn't nobody oh. would even notice. You could just do a like a like a Matrix style reboot. Yeah, that's right. Then, yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, okay, we'll do that. Okay, cool. Sounds really good. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want, it's, it's up to you.